Hello and welcome once again to the 2012 GHSA State Swimming and Diving Championships. You see right now where we have the national anthem going on, the sign that we are about to get underway here. I'm Kevin Cargillo. Alongside me is Richmond Green, a five-time state champion and on four state title teams during his high school career. Richmond, it's really tough to predict who's going to win this state title. Yeah, on the on both on the guys' side and on the girls' side, we've got four or five teams that are really that really any of them could win the state title. But the thing we can count on for sure is seeing a lot of fast swims tonight and a lot of records broken. So if you're one of the coaches right now, you've got to be getting in your swimmers' ears and letting them know this is a big time. It's a big time for us because when you come back, we're going to start things off with the 200 medley relays. You're watching the state swimming and diving championships. The 2012 GHSA Swimming and Diving Championships are brought to you by Verizon, America's largest, most reliable high-speed wireless network. It's your social network, all mixed together. With Galaxy Nexus by Samsung, now you can organize your contacts into circles, like you do in real life. So you can choose what people see and what they don't. And with the speed of Verizon 4G LTE, you can chat as a group in a Google Plus Hangout without missing a beat. Introducing the first phone built for Android 4.0, only at Verizon. Thanks for meeting me here. No problem. You know, Farm Bureau Insurance has local agents making this kind of thing real easy. Well, your auto insurance has saved me a lot on old Becky here. That's great. And since our headquarters are local, we'll be here for old Becky for a long time. Harold, your dog swallowed the remote again. Who's that? Older Becky. Oh. Ugh. Real service, real people. That's Farm Bureau Insurance. You hear the music in the background. They are ready to go here, and we are ready to go. It is the 2012 State Swimming and Diving Championships. The diving is already under the belt, and now we go to determine who is our state champion. We start things off with the boys' 200-yard medley relay, and this is how it'll work. There are eight lanes, eight swimmers in the B final, eight swimmers in the A final. If you are in the B final, the best you can do is ninth place. Even if you set a world record in your swim, you're still in ninth place. And uh, uh, so coveted positions were gotten in the prelims. If you are in the or if you are in the A final rather, and you finish first place, that's all yours. State records on the line. All Americans are on the line. You see the gentlemen are lined up behind their blocks. Let's go over who you see. Up there on the top left of your screen, that was lane two, Harrison. Lane three is Duluth. Four is Etowah. Five, Collins Hill. Six, Kennesaw Mountain. Seven is Centennial. Eight is Mill Creek. And nine right in front of you, that is Roswell. Four swimmers in this event. Each does two links of the pool. Richmond, what is the focus in the 200 medley relay? Well, the focus on the 200 medley relay is great exchange and great finishes into the wall because on a relay, 90% of the time a team gets disqualified, it's from the guy in the water. And you'll watch, you'll watch the butterflies especially and the breaststrokers, the guys that have to come in with two-hand touches, they got to make their finishes perfect in order to, to allow their teammates up on the block to have a great exchange. Yeah, you saw that little bit of a shake right there in lane number seven, Centennial. A lot of non-year-round swimmers. And what I mean when I say non-year-round is that those swimmers do not associate themselves with a club team. A very fast takeoff there in lane number six. Maybe too fast. We'll see what the referees consider. But the lead right now is in favor of Kennesaw Mountain in lane number six. Breaststroke Locks leg. Up for Collins Hill, though. Here they come in lane five. Collins Hill with a strong breaststroke leg. That's Tyler uh, or Taylor Aguirre right there for Collins Hill. He is one of their top swimmers. Aguirre is pulling into the lead. We move into the butterfly leg, one of the strongest legs in the state of Georgia. Yeah, the butterfly has traditionally been very strong in Georgia, and 
look for the guys that are out in front with some clean water to maybe have a little bit of an advantage over the guys that are trailing behind. Right now, that guy out in front is Collins Hill in lane number five. That is Alfonso Castillo. He's followed closely by Kennesaw Mountains, Carter Long, and Jordan Smith of Centennial in seven. Smith uh, coached by Jamie Saffer and Christian Atkinson, who have pulled together a bunch of non-year-round swimmers to make quite a little stab at uh, scoring some points this year. But right now, oh, it's a battle. Out of Kennesaw Mountain there. What a flip turn out of Kennesaw Mountain. Lane six, fighting it down to the end. Collins Hill, Kennesaw down Mountain. The finish. Collins Hill oh, with the reach. Great a finish. fantastic race to kick things off here. And right off the bat, Collins Hill behind the swim of Branford Rimbert is going to take away your first place in the consolation. Now to explain that, first place means ninth place in the consolation final. Second means tenth. That went to Kennesaw Mountain this time. Third place went to Centennial this time. And we now move to the A final. Lane number two is North Gwinnett. Lane number three is Lassiter. Lane number four is Northview. Lane five is Parkview. Lane six is Brookwood. Lane seven is Milton. Lane eight is Alpharetta. Lane nine is Norcross. Top two times in the lanes, uh, our top three times are right in the middle of your pool. Four, five, and six. That's Northview, Parkview, and Brookwood. Northview has the all-star top recruit in the nation, Matthias Koski. Parkview and Brookwood have an incredible group of just awesome swimmers. So what can we look for if Northview's gonna go out and win this? And what do we need to watch if we're gonna see Parkview win or Brookwood win? Well, for Northview, they need to be they need to be at least close, if not winning, going into Koski's leg. Koski is a fantastic swimmer. He's back there on the third leg with uh, swimming Butterfly. And if they can even be close with him, you can guarantee that they're going to have a lead going into that freestyle leg. And Koski, and, not even his best stroke is not even Butterfly. It's freestyle. Swimmer, and he's swimming Butterfly yep. here, and that just shows how great he is. Yep. It also shows a little bit of depth that has slowly developed at Northview as they've gotten a few swimmers in from the last year, transferred in from other states. Parkview, Brookwood, same story every year, always great swimmers. Yeah, and look for all the teams you're going to see here in this A final are teams that are going to be buying for the state title, the, the team title. Um, and so look for one team to try and, or all the teams trying to set a tone here for the rest of the meet to try and put themselves out front, make them the team to beat for the rest of the meet. North Gwinnett in two, Lassiter in three, Milton, Alpharetta, Norcross in seven, eight, and nine. Backstroke, breaststroke, butterfly freestyle is the order of the events. Out early is going to be up there towards the top. That's going to be lane number three, Zach Bunner, one of the best backstrokers you'll ever see in the state of Georgia. He's followed closely, though, by Alex Heldman, the transfer in front into Northview from out of state. Lane number eight is Alpharetta. That's Patrick Cusick. That's a freshman pulling that off. Look at lane three, though. Lane three up there, Lassiter. Lassiter getting in early. Ryan Prince in there for Northview now. He's not the fastest breaststroker, but if he can have a little bit of a lead for Matthias Kalski on that butterfly leg, expect him to pull away a little bit more. In lane number six, that's Nick Lamont uh, Lamontagne. He is very, very fast breaststroker, here one of the top Koski. seeds in Koski. the 100 breaststroke. Koski is going to be in four. He's going to be the last one to take off in that group. Not the fastest takeoff from Koski, but watch him make up ground really, really quick. He is, he is flying right now, and you need watch his turn right here. Koski's got great underwaters. Koski staying can... underwater longer than anybody else comes up. He's recovered the lead a little bit. He's still in second place trying to chase down Rory Martin in lane five for Parkview. The exchange wow. goes into the water. Matt Grodhouse for Northview. Christopher great Rogers for Parkview and Michael Trice for Brookwood. It's going to be really close. Grodhouse is more of a 200 freestyler. Don't expect him to be able to hang up oh, with Parkview comes, and here Brookwood. They come. Here comes Brookwood. Look wow. out, Brookwood coming down and keeping Michael his head Trice down. In Michael the wall. Trice, what a swim. And he will win it 134 Man. 65. Six tenths off a state record right there. Six tenths and an All American automatic time right there. Here's your, that's your newest All American. And uh, Parkview just barely missing it, getting second place. Third place goes to Milton, who uh, took over ahead of Northview, who finished in fourth place. A great way to start it off. The girls are going to take their stab at the 200 medley relay. You're watching the 2012 GHSA Swimming and Diving Championships.
And now it's time for the girls 200 yard medley relay. We start with the consolation final lane two is Milton, three North Cobb, four is Northview, five is North Gwinnett, six is, is Harrison, and then lane seven is Mill Creek. Centennial is in lane eight, and the Savannah Arts Academy is in lane nine. Each swimmer does two links of the pool. Backstroke, breaststroke, butterfly, and then freestyle all over the place. For the guys, the strength is the butterfly. What is the strength for the girls? I'd say the strength for girls is usually the last leg on that freestyle. Um, and, uh, and also on the breaststroke. The breaststroke and freestyle, is where, especially on the breaststroke, you're going to see people separate themselves out a little bit. And they want, like I said before in the guys race, they want that clean water going into the butterfly and freestyle strokes. And into the wall early, your early leader in lane number three. That is the relay from North Cobb. That was Julie Storch with the lead off of the backstroke leg. Storch is actually swimming uh, the backstroke again tonight in the B final. Right now taking the lead though from her is lane number six, or taking the lead, excuse me, from North Cobb is lane number six, and that is Harrison Olivia Jacoby, a very talented breaststroker, trying to move her team up and get those coveted ninth place points. To clarify, if you win the consolation final, you don't get to move up any higher than ninth place no matter how fast you go. Yeah, and that's the really tough part uh, about getting ninth place in prelims. It really frustrates a lot of people because you can you can go in there and try and take it easy a little bit on the, in the prelims thinking that you're going to make it in A final no matter what and find yourself in ninth place and locked out of those, those coveted A final points. A great transition there from Harrison as McKin excuse me, as uh, Aaron Val goes in over McKenzie Payment. Val is a freshman trying to hang on to the lead. Looks like she will do so. A great battle for second place between North Gwinnett, Northview, and Mill Creek. Holly Riddle in there for Northview. Uh, Hannah Terranova for North Gwinnett. Terranova will take it. And Northview gets out touched by lane number seven. That's Mill Creek and Allison Carroll. But your B final winner in lane number six is Harrison. We now move to the A final where we will slowly start to get a picture of who we can expect to be the champion this year. It's probably going to end up being one of the two, Parkview or Brookwood, but we can definitely expect Lassiter, Peachtree Ridge, and Walton to all show up, potentially even Alpharetta or Kennesaw Mountain. Lane two is Etowah, three is Alpharetta. Walton in four, Parkview is in five, Brookwood in six, just the way those rivals would have it. Seven is Peachtree Ridge, eight is Lassiter, nine is Kennesaw Mountain. And not only is there depth in that this is two fast teams, they sh Parkview and Brookwood share a pool, they share a, a, uh, uh, the same county, and for the past 10 years they've shared the county championships and many years have shared the, the state championships alternating back and forth. Yeah, and, and it's fitting that they're right next to each other right here. These guys are great rivals. It's always a great a great meet when these two guys are swimming against each other. And look, look for these two time look look for these two teams to go back and forth during the course of, during the course of the entire meet. So you hear the announcer interview introducing everybody. Parkview is your top seed. They had an All-American consideration time. Don't put too much stock in the top seed though. Brookwood is eight one hundredths of a second behind them on paper. Walton and Peachtree Ridge looking to play the upset card. Walton was only point nine away from that first place seed as well. And with four swimmers, it's anyone's game. Anyone could have a bad swim. 
anyone could have a great swim. Like we've said, two links of the pool per swimmer. Backstrokers in the water first. And you're going to see a huge, huge difference between lane six and lane five. Not the greatest start there in lane number six. She's making up already, though. Yeah, Brooke, she had it. She slipped. A little, it looked like she slipped a little bit off her start, and that's going to hurt her. But she's making up for it right here on the back half of this 50. Different pads here at the Georgia Tech Aquatic Center. The pad, of course, is the touch pad that electronically stops the clock in each lane. Looks like lane number nine actually is leading at the 50 mark, and that is Melissa Postal of Kennesaw Mountain. Postal also posted one of the fastest times in the prelims in the 50 Brooklyn. back. Here comes Brookwood. They're making up a lot of ground right here. Brookwood trying to track down Parkview. Parkview and Brookwood both had about the same time in the prelims on the breaststroke leg. Parkview is going to be very tough to catch. Not a whole lot separates the two except for the freestyle leg. Expect it to come down to that. Brookwood will get into the water in second place. Excuse me, third place. Kennesaw Mountain still holding on to second place. Brookwood trying to hold them off as well. Kennesaw Mountain did not have the best anchor leg on the freestyle. You can expect them to fade, but stranger things have happened. The anchor leg of this Brookwood team is really fast, so I'm not sure if they're going to be able to catch up to Parkview, but look for them to try and get up in there to take second place. Kennesaw Mountain still in the wow. lead. Parkview hanging on in second place. Parkview trying to take Kennesaw Mountain down. Looks like they already have. Brookwood is closing the gap, and they're closing Here fast. Comes. Here she Brookwood comes. Brookwood coming off the turn is going to be everything. Brookwood has moved up into third place. Kennesaw Mountain is fading slowly. Brookwood is moving oh, up. Parkview is going to take it all. I think Kennesaw Mountain might Kennesaw be able to touch Kennesaw Mountain out. might be able to edge out for second. Oh, oh. and they're just out touched. Five one hundredths of a second wow. separates them. A huge save there from Brookwood anchor Kelsey Gouge as she saved that last little uh, part of that race. I don't think and Kennesaw Mountain realized they weren't supposed to be in that. I don't think Kennesaw Mountain cared that they were in eighth place ahead of time. They said they wanted their bronze medal, and now they're going to go get it. Third place goes to them. Second place, as you look on your screen, goes to Brookwood in a time of 148.60. And Parkview is your winner in a time of 147.71. That concludes the girls' 200 medley relay. We'll start the individual event. Stay tuned. You're watching the GHSA 2012 Swimming and Diving Championships. Next is the boys' 200-yard freestyle. We start with the consolation final. Austin Gulls from Duluth in two. Carter Long from Kennesaw Mountain in three. Zach Marshall from Lassiter in four. Matt Crodhouse just swam in the 200 medley relay. He's in five. Ethan Webster from North Gwinnett in six. Dylan Kaysen from Parkview in seven. Jack Gunning from Walton in eight. And Keenan Sweeney from Brookwood is in lane nine. The 200 free is a really grueling event. It is, and the great the great swimmers, it, while it is grueling, the great swimmers will treat it like a sprint event and not not like a distance event. There, a lot of them will go out on their arms, and that what, what that means is they're going to swim the first part of the race mainly focusing on using their arms, and then when they get to the last half or the, or the last 75 of the race, they're going to really bring those legs in to help them keep up their speed and go faster when their arms start to get a little bit tired. For those of you unfamiliar with the swimming world, a 25-yard length is one lap. And right now, after four laps and 100 yards are under our belts, lane seven, Dylan Kaysen is in the lead. He's followed by Keenan Sweeney, the sophomore from Brookwood. And in third place is Webster, excuse me, Ethan Webster from North Gwinnett. He is in lane number six. 
this is probably, or it looks to me like this is the toughest part of the race. Yes, it, the third 50 is all, when, it, when a coach talks to a swimmer about the 200 freestyle, you know, it's easy to go out the first 100 and it's easy to bring it, it's easier to try and want to go fast on that last 50. It's that third 50 and that last 75, you know, that really is really where people succeed. Dylan Kaysen looks like he's struggling just a little bit as lane number six, Ethan Webster's trying to track him down. Kaysen's kick is picking up. Watch out over there in lane number three. That's Carter Long at Kennesaw Mountain. He's trying to move up into the third place spot. And he will do it. Great swim. Great. 144-4 in the B final is not a bad swim. Very all. impressive swim from everybody and a very good swim from Dylan Kaysen, who wins the B final and will take ninth overall. We move to the A final, an exciting story coming your way. Let's get to who's in the race. Michael Reagan from Takula is in two. Michael Dugan from Marietta is in three. Powell Brooks from Norcross is in four. Matthias Koski, you heard us mention him during the 200 medley relay. He's in lane five. He's a senior from Northview. Jimmy Yoder from Lassiter is in lane six. Connor Oslin from Harrison is in seven. Cody Rule from Alpharetta in eight. And Mason McIntyre from Grayson in nine. Two stories here. Number one, Jimmy Yoder has had an awesome, awesome career at Lassiter and is definitely one of the top swimmers in the state, if not one of the top swimmers in the nation. And we will look forward to seeing where he goes next year when he becomes a senior. But he is overshadowed by lane five, Matthias Koski, the number one recruit in the nation who has already committed to UGA. And now he's going to try and better his own state record, which he just barely missed in the prelims. The record is a 137.98. And uh, Koski will definitely be trying. He's already got the All-American automatic cut. So now he's just going to try and better it slightly uh, to get under his state record pace. Yeah, I think that's, that's his goal right now is to try and get under that state record. He already owns it, but he, he doesn't want to go out with the record being from his junior. He wants to set that record where nobody can get it again. He went out fast last year. He's going to have to go out fast again this year. This is a painful race. Where's Koski going to focus? He, he, like you said, he goes out fast. And it's very quiet. You can feel the anticipation in the room. It's kind of why we both got quiet for a second. Koski's not going to waste any time. Usually he takes a moment to take the lead. He's not a sprinter, although he can do that too with some of the best. Koski's already out. And to put this in perspective, Jimmy Yoder is in the top 25 swimmers in the nation. He's and Matthias Koski is just going to absolutely run away from him. Yeah, and it's 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 one of those situations where it's really unfortunate that a great swimmer like Jimmy Yoder isn't going to be able, isn't got a great shot at winning the state title. Whereas if he had been in a 4A meet, he he would be up there with top contenders to try and win this. But look look at him. He's trying to get out. He's doing the great strategy of trying to get out front of Koski before Koski can start coming back on him. If he can build up a big enough lead, there's no telling what's going to happen at the end of this race. Matthias Koski went out in a 22-19 on the first length. He is a 46-38. That is wow. one and a half seconds faster than he was last year. He is absolutely flying right now. Jimmy Yoder, we cannot overlook the swim this young man is putting in there as well. He is absolutely flying. Koski flips, hits at 111.29. That is two full seconds faster than his state record he's pace. He's going to go 136, Koski I think. is going to try and break the record by not a little, but he's going to try and crush it. He's hurting, though. He's struggling. He went out really fast, and he is hurting right now. Koski is tightening up. The crowd is trying to get behind him a little bit. It's very, very hard to figure out where he's, he's at. Oh, he's going to wow. crush the record. 136.15 One from Matthias Koski. Jimmy Yoder. Jimmy Yoder just missed the old state record by .22. Yeah. And Jimmy Yoder just probably set his team's record uh, for Peachtree, or excuse me, for Lassiter. And Yoder also getting under the All-American Automatic qualifying time, but the story is Matthias Koski. Congratulations to him as he sets a new state record and a time of 136.15. That's the 200 free for the boys. We'll be back with the girls. Stay tuned. You're watching the 2012 GHSA State Swimming Diving and Champ Championships.
Up next is event four, the girls 200 yard freestyle. We start with the consolation final. Lane two, Elizabeth Willis from Camden County, Savannah Long from Kennesaw Mountain in three, Anna Jans from Brookwood in four. In lane five, Tinsley Flint from Peachtree Ridge, Bell Berry from Hillgrove in six, Lida Walsh from Centennial in seven, Danielle Boards from Alpharetta in eight, and Nicole Prindis from Lassiter in nine. The strategy for this race is uh, seemingly a little bit different than the boys' race. Yeah, and the, and the girls' race, they're going to try and pace a little bit more. They don't generally they don't try and sprint it as much as the guys do, and they're going to look to pace themselves this first part of the race and then really try and explode that last hundred. But it looks like lane two is out to an early lead. Yeah, that early lead is owned by Elizabeth Willis of Camden County. Willis was out early uh, when she swam this in the prelims as well. One of the faster swims uh, on the first half, but doesn't mean she can't come back. She was out in a 20 or 55 92 by far one of the fastest times out of all eight swimmers and uh, She'll try and hang on. She's followed closely by Anna Johns of Brookwood in lane number four. That's a freshman. Lane seven is Lida Walsh of Centennial. She's a senior, so it may come down to experience. It may not. She's still holding on up there in lane two. That is Elizabeth Willis I'm talking about. And this is where you start to see the arms really cramp up. Yeah, this is where you're going to see the middle of the field come up on her a little bit. And I'll, I'm, I'm going to be surprised if she can hold on to win this race. If she does, that would be an incredible accomplishment. Seated 15th, moving all the way up to ninth place. She is seizing up definitely. Coming up on that place is lane number four. That is uh, Anna Johns of Brookwood, the She's freshman. Up her Johns' right arm tempo has dramatically changed, although Willis is trying to hold her off. Willis reaching. Wow. She might be able to hold on. Oh, she man. took an extra stroke. Bad finish. She took an extra stroke, and you can't do that, but it's all right. She moved up to 10th place. She swam an incredible race. She should be thrilled with that, and it looks like she is. Yeah, coming but out of lane two, that's really tough. For the what two a swim time. from 15th to 10th place, but moving up to 9th place in lane number four is Anna Johns of Brookwood. Now on to the A final. And a little bit of the same here. The girls will be trying to uh, get that All-American automatic cut. Lane two, Karen Suija of Centennial. Savannah Root of Peachtree Ridge in lane three. Allie Crenshaw from Lassiter in lane four. Rachel Muller of Brookwood in five. Madison Jacoby in six. She's from Harrison. Kaylin Thomas from North Forsyth in seven. Hannah Terranova from North Gwinnett in eight, and from Jenkins, Carolyn, Carolyn Bonfield is in lane nine. Rachel Muller was the top seed. She's way ahead of the second seed, almost a full second. The All-American automatic time, though, is a hefty 149.79, and Muller is not that far off of it, but neither is uh, Madison Jacoby from Harrison, who is in lane number six. Watch, watch Rachel Muller to really get out to a big lead here. She's come, she came into the meet with a 148. She, don't be fooled by her prelims time. She was probably in the heat by herself, got out to a good lead, and then probably started taking it easy a little bit to rest up for today. And look for her to really try and push out to a big lead here early in front of all the rest of this A heat. A seeming risk to many of you, but uh, most of us uh, 
we, we don't understand how the swimming world works. So many of these swimmers know exactly where they should finish and exactly how to swim their race. An incredible amount of control over their bodies. Rachel Muller is definitely one of those swimmers. The state record is quite a hefty record. It's set by current Westminster coach Elizabeth Hill in a time of 146.32 when she said that it was the national private school record. The national record is even more hefty. It's by Dagny Knudsen, and it's a 142.81. No one's touching that one for quite a while. Yeah, that's, that's not going down for a while. So we're off in the 200 freestyle. Look for Madison Jacoby to try and get up there and stay with Muller at the beginning. That's who she's probably going to want to pace off of. Watch the difference between the tempos of Madison and Rachel. Madison's really taking it out fast, really sprinting, while Rachel looks really smooth right now. And that's going to make a difference later on in the race because Madison's going to have a harder time holding on after trying so hard this first part. Madison Jacoby a little bit straight arm. It looks like Rachel Muller bends her arms a little bit more than Jacoby does. But right now, Jacoby still has the edge as we reach the halfway mark. Four laps under our belt and only four one hundredths of a second separate the two. The battle for second is anyone or excuse me for third is anyone's guess right now. It's the edges to Hannah Terranova of North Gwinnett. She's a freshman. We'll see if her lack of experience hurts her right now. She's not letting it hold her back. Uh, here, Still a great battle in the middle of the pool. Here comes Rachel Muller. You saw her legs coming off that last turn and this last 50 right here. She's really going to take off, but I'm really surprised about how well Madison Jacoby is holding on right now. Both of them flipping well under where they were in the prelims, a full second and a half. Rachel Muller is She's falling behind. Picking up behind. her turnover. How's she Ma doing that? Madison Jacoby seemingly summoning energy for, in, from nowhere. And coming off this last wall, it's wow. going to be anybody's race. Muller trying to find it in her energy to make a move. Jacoby just doesn't want to let her pass. It's Jacoby. Muller. It is Jacoby. Jacoby wow. by 15 one hundredths of a second. Great race. And she also just sneaks under for actually by a full second sneaks under that All-American automatic qualifying time. And look at the sportsmanship right there as Muller and Jacoby hug each other. An incredible race between the two of them. Congratulations to them both. Third place ended up going to Hannah Terranova, the freshman from North Gwinnett. Congratulations to Madison Jacoby. We will move forward to the 200 IM after a short break for awards. You're watching the 2012 GHSA Swimming and Diving Championships. Next is the boys 200 yard individual medley in lane two for Marietta, Tyler Harper, lane three, Chris Loff of Hillgrove, Eric Juan of Milton in four, Ryan Prince of Northview in five, Michael Kinney of Northview in six, he's a Georgia Tech commit. Ryan Lauschen of Alpharetta is in seven, Dustin Wynn of Brookwood in eight, and Joseph Potri Potillo of Duluth is in lane nine. Each swimmer uh, the race is two lengths of the pool of each stroke. You start with butterfly, you go to backstroke, then breaststroke, then freestyle. And this is a really grueling race that favors some of the bold. Yeah, in this race, um, you're going to see a lot of swimmers get out to a big lead on their butterfly, but where, re where the winners really try and push is the people that can succeed on the breaststroke leg of this of this race. Right now, the edge of the race is in Eric Wan's favor. He's from Milton, a junior. And Juan leading with a 24.03, followed closely by Chris Loff of Hillgrove in lane number three. 
fourth few with two swimmers in the middle of the pool in lanes five and six in Ryan Prince and Michael Kinney. They're going to really try and push each other here, and that's that's the great thing about having a teammate right next to you is it makes you even more competitive. Um, when, when swimmers have somebody to really compete against right next to them, it really pushes you to a whole different level. Eric Juan doesn't look like he's going to give up his lead if he can't help it. Look for Ryan Prince in lane five to start making a move. He is a breaststroker, as is Chris Luff of Hillgrove in lane number three. Juan looks like he's slowing down slightly. Chris Loff is catching him, catching him right here on the second part of the brush drum. It's going to come down to the freestyle leg for sure. It just matters. Our question is, who's got enough heart behind it to try and get after it? Juan had a great uh, that butterfly backstroke and breaststroke leg this morning, but not the greatest freestyle leg. Really trying to get their legs up going right now. It's a lot. It's really hard to go from that from the slower tempo of the breaststroke into the sprinting of the freestyle. And it looks it looks like he's really getting his legs up, getting his tempo going. Juan in away. first, Loff in second, and uh, it's a relative myriad of swimmers in third place. Although Michael Kinney looks like he's pulling away. He might even pull up into second. Oh, and he just misses it. A great acceleration. One Only one of one hundredth of a second. Yeah. He tried, but he might have tried a little bit too late. A great swim, though, from Eric Juan, who moves up into ninth place, scoring big points for Milton. We go to the A final now from North Gwinnett and to Tomas Perabonio, Perbonio, excuse me, Jeffrey Carter from Parkview in three, Aiden Sweeney from Brookwood in four, Devin Hughes of Parkview in five, Zach Bunner from Lasseter in six, Jared Blanton from Etowah in seven, Ricky Lehner from Parkview in eight, and Nick Cassidy from Centennial in nine. Three Parkview swimmers here. Yeah, watch watch for the Parkview, watch for Parkview, especially Devin Hughes up there in the top spot, trying to hold on to that, trying to give his team some big points, but watch out for Aiden Sweeney there, uh, seated in third place. Uh, he, he looked like he took it a little bit easy in prelims. And also watch out, maybe a long shot, Ricky Leonard there in lane seven. He is seated second in the breaststroke. And like I was saying before, breaststrokers can occasionally be really great IMers because that's the toughest leg for a lot of people. Well, we will see what happens. Devin Hughes, a senior, is going to try and pull off some big points for Parkview. And they definitely want uh, that that to happen for them as they are trying to make a bid at a, a state title, one of the many in that his uh, storied school's um, you know trophy case. I mean, they are great at every sport. Swimming is definitely included in that. Two links of the pool of each stroke: butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke, and then freestyle. Watch the middle of the pool. Really, no one has differentiated themselves greatly from the rest of the field. But expect Aiden Sweeney, Devin Hughes, Zach Bunner, and Jared Blanton to pull away and try and battle each other. Only a second separating the four of them. Devin Hughes really taking off after this butterfly leg, and he's 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 really trying to push it. Devin Hughes didn't have the fastest butterfly leg in the prelims. That was actually Zach Bunner that did. And well, there you go. He's there out is. to an early lead and. He split uh, exactly the same as he Great did. Great the underwater prelims. there from Zach Bonner. Wow, he just he just put a body length on Devin Hughes there just on that one turn. Zach Bunner utilizing that butterfly kick that he just utilized in the butterfly. Does Devin Hughes have a chance to pull up on him? He did split a 32 in the 50 breast to Zach Bunner's 35 in the 50 breast wow, in the he prelims. He just put some serious separation between him and the rest of the field right there on that backstroke leg. Here comes Devin Hughes. Watch out for him. He's one of the top breaststrokers in the state, although he's dug himself quite a hole here. Zach Bunner is not a breaststroker, and you can probably tell as his lead diminishes slowly. But if he can hold on and be in the lead going into the freestyle leg, you have to imagine he can hold on to win. Aiden Sweeney can track him down. He's a very good breaststroker. Here comes although. Ricky Leonard in lane seven. He's moving up into second place. Yep, as is lane number three, which is Jeffrey Carter from Parkview, a teammate of Devin Hughes. All the way out in the lead is Bunner. Bunner is way ahead. At 123 is where he flipped. It's just three seconds faster. If he's not careful, we might be seeing another All-American right here. 
And that's he's what tightening we're up on this freestyle leg. He's very much hurting, trying to check him down over there in lane number three is Jeffrey Carter. Carter's not going to be able to do it, but he is going to be able to hold on to second place. The question is, can Aiden Sweeney hold on to third place? And the answer is yes. Some great swims from everybody. An All-American swim from Zach Bunner as he takes the state title. Congratulations to him. Your final uh, result in third place was Aiden Sweeney. He's from Brookwood. In second place from Parkview, that is Jeffrey Carter. And your winner from Lassiter in lane number six was Zach Bunner. The girls will do the 200 IM in just a moment. You're watching the 2012 GHSA State Swimming and Diving Championship. Next is the girls 200 yard individual medley in lane two from Woodstock as Rebecca Lombard lane three Jane Watts from Walton Kelsey Prince from Northview a freshman in four Jacqueline Rohal from Alpharetta in five Sarah Redman from Centennial a senior Anna Tate from Parkview in seven Emily Yang from Northview in eight another freshman and Cynthia Liu from Roswell in nine. The girls uh, it, about the same as the boys in how to swim the 200 IM. Uh, they swim it a little bit differently, but uh, it's, still, it's still the same points of focus. The breaststrokers are going to succeed because that, that's where a lot of ground is made up was in the breaststroke leg. But look, they're not going to stay under quite as long on their butterfly or, or backstroke legs. So they're going to want to try and get up and get moving over the water as fast as they can. An early lead is in lane number four. That's Kelsey Prince. She is a very talented butterflyer, so that's to be expected. She will try and hold on in the backstroke. A very evenly matched field here. Like Richmond mentioned, the only separation really occurring during the breaststroke. So look for whoever's going to win it to separate themselves right there. Trying to separate herself right now is Jacqueline Rohal of Alpharetta in lane number five. And you'll notice, you'll notice that in this field and also in the A final, you're the, the we, the leader in points right now is looking like Brookwood, but they don't have anyone in this event. So look for look for Peachtree Ridge, Lassiter, Parkview, all those schools that are trying to catch up to Brookwood here in this early part of this meet, trying to make up a lot of points here in this first part. And it looks like lane five is really taking off on this breaststroke leg. Yeah, right now the lead in the meet is Brookwood's Peachtree Ridge right behind them, but 11 points is a big lead at such an early stage. Brookwood, like we mentioned, does not have any swimmers in the 200 IM but neither does Peachtree Ridge. Lassiter has a few, or has one in the A final. Peachtree Ridge, excuse me, does have one in the A final as well, so they will look to close that gap. Right now, no one's closing the gap on uh, Jacqueline Rohal from Alpharetta. She is way ahead on the freestyle. She'll try and hold off lane number six, Sarah Redman from Centennial. Redman, a very good butterflyer and freestyler, but it doesn't look like she's gonna have Enough to reel it in. Third place, a battle from our outside lanes, lanes two and nine. That's Rebecca Lombard and Cynthia Liu from Woodstock and Roswell. Third place goes to Cynthia Liu. Great swim from Rohal there. Great swim for the senior. Great swim all around. Almost everybody improved their time during that heat. We go now to the A final. Swimming in lane number two from Mill Creek. Give me a second. Frederic Lefebvre. Hopefully I got that right. Lane number three is Kennesaw Mountain, Rebecca Postol. Lane four from Etowah is Taylor Weiss. Lane five is Kira DeBruin from Walton. Lane six is Darby Wainer from Savannah Arts Academy. Carrington Bevier is from Peachtree Ridge and she is in seven. Sarah Wilford from Lassiter is in eight. And Allison Carr from North Gwinnett is in nine. Nobody from Brookwood in the heat. 
Yeah, this is going to be a situation where Preacher Ridge and Laster and Parkview can really make up some points going into the next event, the 50 freestyle. And especially Peachtree Ridge here with only one swimmer in the A final, they're looking for Carrington Bevier to really get up there and get a, get a medal, hopefully, get top three. Parkview, or excuse me, Peachtree Ridge uh, had, uh, Parkview had one swimmer in that B final. So they will not be moving up at all during this A final as far as the points that they scored there. Nothing can change. But right now, the battle is in the middle of the is in the middle of the pool, and it ranges from lane three all the way to lane number seven. Here's the separation. Point eight from first to fifth place. Anybody's race. 6th, 7th, and 8th place are up for anybody as well. And the 200 IM is one of those events where you can improve greatly. Yeah, it's really it's really an area where there's, since you've got so many strokes, each stroke is so different that if you just try and fix one thing on each leg of the race, you could see you could see a second, maybe even two second drop in just one, between one race to the next. Taylor Weiss and Darby Wayner were the two fastest butterflyers out this morning, and they are already separating themselves at this point. And looks like lane number four, Taylor Weiss of Etowah, is going to be in the lead, 2572. That's actually half a second faster than she split in the prelims. Darby Wayner splitting right at where she was during the prelims. Kira Bruin. Actually a slight bit faster than she was in the prelims. They're going to all even up here in the backstroke and breaststrokes legs. And then it's going to come down to the freestyle leg where there was literally three tenths of a second separating the fastest split to the slowest split. And watch, watch this breaststroke leg be really where Kira separates herself because she had the fastest bre or uh, actually Car Carrington Bevia had the fastest breaststroke split. So look for her and Kira to really make up some ground right here. Going to try and level the playing field. Lane number seven is really the only one that's out of it. That's our top breaststroker, Carrington Bevier, and she's already moving back up into it. It's become a three-person race in the middle of the pool. Four, five, and six, Taylor Weiss, Kira DeBrun, and Darby Wayner. This is going to be a close race. Two sophomores and a freshman slowly pulling into the lead. Seems to be Kira De Bruin. We'll see at the touch. It is actually, it is indeed Kira De Bruin right behind her. Taylor Weiss by less than three tenths of a second. And then another two tenths behind that is lane number six, Darby Wayner coming down to the freestyle leg. They've got to be hurting. Um, yeah, this is the part of the race where you just got to dig deep, put your head down, and you, you really want to breathe. But on this freestyle, like you got to put your head down, just like Kira's doing right now. You got to put your head down, get into the finish, and have a perfect finish. Kira De Bruin comes under the flags, and it looks like she will be your state champion. And hanging on to third place was Taylor Weiss. In between the two of them was Darby Wayner. Kira De Bruin going a 2:04:22, good enough for an All-American consideration time. A very good swim from her. All three of those ladies improved their times. In fact, most of the field improved their times. Congratulations to all of those ladies. We will resume with the 50 free after a short break for awards. You're watching the GHSA State Swimming and Diving Championships. We move on to the boys 50 yard freestyle. We won't have enough time to give you everybody's name. We'll try and give you the highlights as we go through. What's the key to winning this race? This race is all about the start and the and the turn. 
especially at the turn, the great 50 freestylers. You'll see the field, you'll see the field be pretty even going into the turn. It's the great 50 freestylers can get in and out of the turn as fast and faster than anybody else. Clean start, everybody got up right at about the same point. You don't spend a lot of time underwater. Everybody's going into the wall about even. Looks like the fastest turn was over there in lane number two, Garrison. Lane Venus eight, of right up Milk here, Creek. look at the bottom of your screen. Lane eight, also pulling ahead. It's anybody's race coming into the finish. It's wow. gonna be who's got the longest fingernail. It's gonna be lane number three, and wow. that is Marco Karulik, Karulik of Collins Hill. They were all within two tenths of each other two right there. Two tenths of a second, one of the best races we've seen in the 50 freestyle. Second, there was a tie for fourth place, a three-way tie actually, uh, between lane five, lane seven, and lane number nine. Second place went to Nick LaMontagne in lane number eight, and third place went to Billy Stark from Camden, Camden County in lane four. A final, Christopher Rogers in part, from Parkview for, in lane two. Jackson Wayson from North Gwinnett in three, Chris Powell from Mill Creek in four, Michael Trice from Brookwood in five, Sean Slope from Wheeler in six, Daniel Bridgers from Lassiter in seven, Drew Cuddick in eight, also from Lassiter, Blair Connor from Centennial in nine. No freshmen in this heat. Well, the 50 freestyle is not an event that you usually see many younger guys get into it. It's usually the older, stronger guys. It's really about strength in this race as well as as well as technique and a lot a lot of these swimmers will have taken a long time several years to develop their lungs develop their muscles to be really ready for a high speed a high intensity race like this 50 freestyle and don't look for many of these guys to take hardly any maybe no breaths on this 50 freestyle Parkview with only one swimmer up in the a final Lassiter with two swimmers up in the a final and Lassiter uh, is, is in second place, 69 points to them, 74 points to Parkview. A noticeable miss is Northview, who only had one swimmer in the B final, and they are actually in third place in the points battle. Brookwood in fourth place. They have the top seed in Michael Trice. Trice will, anywhere else in the nation, you would expect Trice to separate himself with a 20.83. You've got two guys right behind him, and Chris Powell from Mill Creek and Sean Sloat from Wheeler, who are both right on that All-American automatic qualifying time, who will try and give him a run for his money. Those three will probably separate themselves. The rest of the field probably will not. Great takeoffs from all of those three that I just mentioned in four, five, and six. They are the, the third, fourth, and fifth from the top of your screen. Michael Trice is flying into Michael that turn. Michael Trice, what an amazing turn and an amazing oh, push off from wow. him. He got under everybody's wake. Trice is pulling into the lead. See ya. Trice is gonna come in. He might break 20. No, he didn't. 20.48, wow. an incredible swim. And two he just hundreds off the state record. Barely two misses 100. the state record. A little bit upsetting to him, but he's got a smile. He just scored 20 points for his team and helped them to try and pull back into this battle for the state title. Trice in first place. Sloat from Wheeler in second place and Chris Powell from Mill Creek in third place. We'll take a quick break for awards. Stay tuned, you're watching the 2012 GHSA Swimming and Diving State Championships. Up next is the girls 50 freestyle. This is a fast event, so we won't have enough time to say everybody's name in this B final, but we will keep you updated on who's pulling into the lead. Less than a second, or excuse me, less than seven tenths of a second separates our ninth place seed to our 16th place seed. Clean start, everybody in the water, everyone up quick. 
Fast arms, fast legs, good turns, and you've got yourself a, a, a nice win in the B Constellation final. Yeah, lo look at that Look at that turn. You can see lane six. Is she separating herself a little bit? But uh, here comes the rest of the field coming into the finish, lane four. Anybody's race as we come out of the flags, and it is going to be lane number four, Michaela Janko from Lassiter winning the B final. Third place went to lane number three, Maddie Rolson of Mill Creek. And second place went to Madison Taylor of West Forsyth in lane number five. Moving to the A final, lane number two from Parkview Morgan, Morgan Fleming. Lane three from Collins Hill, Jennifer Rutledge. Lane four from Brookwood, Kelsey Gouge. Lane five from Archer, Lexi Smith. Lane six from Archer, Lydia Jones. Lane seven from Woodstock, Erica Steskevicius. In lane eight, Peachtree Ridge is Christina Wang. And in lane nine, Northview's Christina Moran. Uh, less than a second separating the first place seed to the eighth place seed in this event. Yeah, this is, th in this race, it's the same way, it's swum the same way between girls and guys. It's all about getting off the block and getting into those turns fast and really getting your arms over and getting your kick up high out of the water. And you're gonna see, you're gonna see those top girls going into the wall and getting out of the wall as fast as they can. And uh, we will see what happens pretty soon here. Many of these girls have been waiting for a chance like this for a long time. The 53 does not favor the young swimmers. It favors the older swimmers who have matured a little bit and have a little bit more muscle on their body than most. In lane five is your top seed with a 23.52. That is Lexi Smith. She's from Archer. Her teammate right next to her, also from Archer, is Lydia Jones. Both of them were under the All-American consideration time. And we will see if anybody can get that very, it's a quite the hefty All-American automatic time for the girls. It's a 23.49, but uh, very close to it is Lexi Smith and Lydia Jones, or Lydia Jones, excuse me. We will see what happens. Many of these Great swimmers enjoy these very nice Lexi blocks. There. Great start from Lexi Smith. Not the greatest start from Lydia Jones in lane number six. First to the wall is Lexi. She's, She's flying. She's really flying, swinging those arms. Also in the mix, coming up there in lane number four, that is Kelsey Gouge of Brookwood. Gouge trying to make a move wow, on the last little finish. second. Who's going to put their hand on the oh, wall first? It is Gouge. Great finish. It is Gouge. And Gouge gets that A, or All-American automatic qualifying time, as does Lexi Smith. Congratulations to her for getting that cut. She finishes in second and getting the All-American consideration time in lane number three was Lydia Jones. Lots of All-American consideration times, actually. Congratulations to all of those ladies. We will be right back after a 15-minute break where the diving would typically occur. Thanks for tuning in. Stay with us. We've got more awesome swimming action. You're watching the 2012 Swimming and Diving State Championships. The 2012 GHSA Swimming and Diving Championships are brought to you by Verizon, America's largest, most reliable, high-speed wireless network. It's your social network, all mixed together. With Galaxy Nexus by Samsung, now you can organize your contacts into circles, like you do in real life. So you can choose what people see and what they don't. And with the speed of Verizon 4G LTE, you can chat as a group in a Google Plus Hangout without missing a beat. Introducing the first phone built for Android 4.0, only at Verizon. Thanks for meeting me here. No problem. You know, Farm Bureau Insurance has local agents making this kind of thing real easy. Well, your auto insurance has saved me a lot on old Becky here. That's great. And since our headquarters are local, we'll be here for old Becky for a long time. Harold, your dog swallowed the remote again. Who's that? Older Becky. Oh. Ugh. Real service, real people. That's Farm Bureau Insurance. All right, the next event of the evening is the boys' 100-yard butterfly. We start with the B final. Alfonso Castillo of Collins Hill in two. Corey Mills of Peachtree Ridge in three. Griffin Garrett 
of Milton in four, Marco Korolik of Collins Hill in five, Patrick Cusick in six from Alpharetta, Henry Long from Lassiter in seven, Jacob Young in eight from Etowa, and Alari Lavrat uh, Lopez uh, from Woodstock in nine. Hunter Butterfly, a more grueling race than it looks like. Yeah, you you really, it's a lot tougher than it looks like. You, it looks like these guys are really kind of taking it easy, but that's because they're doing that on purpose. They're making it look easy. And the way you win this race is off your turns. And you got to be fast in your turns, and you got to you gotta get that distance off the wall underneath the water. If you get up too fast, you're going to get caught up in weight coming off of the water, following the swimmers into the wall. And you got to get underneath that and get you really into the into the turn. Alex Heldman right now from Northview leading the way, scoring some much needed points for Northview. Northview fell to fifth place in the points as Alpharetta overtook them through the diving competition. And he does go on to win that B final. Excuse me. Uh, that was Garrett Griffin that won that in lane number four from Milton. Looking at the wrong sheet. I was looking at the A final. Second place went to Marco Korolik of Collins Hill. And third place goes to Henry Long of Lassiter in lane number seven. We go to the A final. And Mason McIntyre is in two from Grayson. Rory Martin is in three from Parkview in lane four. Alex Heldman from Northview. Sam Lewis from Milton in five. Jimmy Yoder from Lassiter in six. Connor Oslin from Harrison in seven. Mitchell Cross from Camden County in eight. Carter Long from Kennesaw Mountain in lane nine. And watch for Jimmy Yoder right here. You saw him swim that 200 freestyle against Matthias Koski. And once again, he's the second place swimmer coming up, but this time he's gonna be a, he's got a lot better chance going against Sam Lewis right here. He's only seated a tenth of a second underneath him. And watch, watch, watch for Sam Lewis and Jimmy Yoder to put on a great race right here. And a all-American automatic time already put up by Sam Lewis in lane five. Usually you don't see much competition with someone that fast, but we do have Jimmy Yoder who is incredibly fast. We saw him finish second to Matthias Koski in the 200 freestyle. And we will see if he can overcome that second place bug here in the 100 butterfly. Sam Lewis and Jimmy Yoder will probably break out ahead. Alex Heldman will probably be able to hang with them, but we'll see who can really score the points here top uh, is Parkview right now. They've got 131 points. Brookwood has 100 points. Lassiter with 96 points. Alpharetta 74 and Northview with 66. So Northview really looking to score points here. Parkview trying to really extend their lead as Brookwood doesn't have anybody in this heat. Yeah, you're going to look for Parkview to really try and hope that Roy Martin gets up there. Hopefully to fourth place. Better yet, try and grab that bronze medal away. He's, I, I, don't, I don't see him catching Sam Lewis or Jimmy Yoder, especially look at the lead that Sam Lewis has going into that first 50. Sam He's Lewis really absolutely off. flying half a second faster than he was in the prelims. He did die a little bit coming back in the prelims uh, on the second leg, but... He's trying to get under the Here state record Yoder. cut, 48-72. Yoder. Yoder, remember, is a 200 freestyler. He should be able to close wow, the gap. Wow. Yoder really reaching out as far as he can. Who's He's it going to be? Him. Yoder. It is what Yoder. A finish. What a comeback from Yoder. Wow, congratulations to Jimmy Yoder, one of the best last 25s that we've seen. That reminds me of the 2008 Olympics. Yeah, the versus. last leg when you didn't think he could make that out touch. Lane number six with the win there. Second place is Sam Lewis. And lane number four is Alex Heldman from Northview finishing in third place. That concludes the 100 Butterfly. Take a quick break with the boys. Uh, done with the 100 Fly, move on to the girls' 100 Fly after a short awards break. You're watching the GHSA Swimming and Diving State Championships.
route. Up next is the girls 100 yard butterfly. Heat one of the consolation final behind the blocks getting ready to step up. Lane one, Evan Parker from Brookwood, Gabrielle Pick from Milton and three. Megan Yang from Parkview and four, Sarah Redmond from Centennial and five, Lauren Searcy from Etowah and six, Katie Crow from Mill Creek and seven, Emily Yang from Northview and eight, and Ali Ramirez from Lassiter in nine. Three freshmen in this heat, and you will actually see a few more freshmen in the butterflies for the women. Yeah, for girls especially, girls tend to uh, develop and mature, and their bodies are a little bit stronger, the, the, a little bit younger than uh, boys do. So you're going to see a lot more younger women than younger guys swimming at an event like this be because of that advantage they have of their bodies maturing. Brookwood really hoping that Evan Parker out there in lane number two, top of your screen, can make something happen. They're currently in the lead in the race to win the championship, but they, this, she is the only swimmer they have in this event. Kennesaw Mountain has nobody. They are currently in second place. Peachtree Ridge, though, does have somebody up in the A final, and they are currently in third place. Could really close the gap. Right now, though, the lead is in lane number six. That's Lauren Searcy of Etowah, and Etowah could definitely use the points to get back up. Searcy will take the victory, and that will give her first place in the consolation final, which is actually ninth place overall. Third place goes to lane number five. That's Sarah Redman from Centennial. That finishes her individual uh, swimming career. A great career it was. And in lane number three is Gabrielle Pick from Milton. We go to the A final. Lane two is Allison Chandler, three, Kira DeBruin. Four, Rachel Dudley. Five, Lydia Jones. We saw her earlier. Taylor Weiss in six. Haley McInerney in seven. Mackenzie Payment in eight. And Maggie Anderson in nine. Two more freshmen. The big story here is, though, Peachtree Ridge can make up a lot of ground if they can get Haley McInerney, the freshman, up into that first spot. Yeah, that's a lot of responsibility to put on a freshman. She's not at, this is her first state meet. She's, uh, it's, it's tough to come in here into this environment, this Georgia Tech swimming arena, and, and compete with these other great swimmers. But she's not that far behind, and she can easily make it up to second place. She can make a, make a case for second place, maybe even first place. Remember Lydia Jones, who is your top seed, is a very, very talented sprinter. We will see her probably jump out to an early lead and just try and hang on. She was a good seven-tenths of a second ahead of everybody else because of her ability to get out ahead of the rest of the group. It is a little bit tougher, though. She did just swim the 50 freestyle only 15 minutes ago. And in prelims, it's a little bit easier to make that transition because you have a lot of other heats taking us some time, giving you time to warm down in the, in the warm down pool. But now she's only had 15 minutes to sort of go from the 50 freestyle and jump right back into this race. We'll see if that is a factor as the referees have them taking their mark. A clean start. Great start. You Lydia. won't see the women stay underwater quite as long. Yeah, they, they women, when they swim this race, they tend to not stay underwater quite as long as the men as, as the men do, but they try and get up on top of the water and race mainly on the top of the water. And the All-American Automatic qualifying time not that far out of the reach of Lydia Jones. She does look a little bit tired, not taking the lead like she did in the prelims. She's in third place. Ahead of her is uh, Taylor Weiss. And then ahead of Weiss is Rachel Dudley from Mill Creek. Mill Creek would love to get those points and get back up into this race to win a state title. Yeah, right look at now, Rachel Dudley going into that turn. She really took control of this race. A little bit of a coast from Dudley coming off the turn oh, may have cost comes. her greatly. Here comes Lydia, Lydia Jones. Jones changing her strategy from prelims to finals. Will it be enough? No, it will not. Hanging on is Rachel Dudley to become the state champion in the 100 butterfly and score some big Big, big points. And Peachtree Ridge very happy with their freshman, Haley McInerney, who got fourth place down there in lane number seven. That'll help out their points battle very much. Third place goes to Taylor Weiss in lane number six. Second to Lydia Jones from Archer in five. And Rachel Dudley, like we already mentioned, from Mill Creek, your state champion. Stay tuned. The men's 100 freestyle is up next. You're watching the 2012 GHSA State Swimming and Diving Championships.
Up next is the boys 100 freestyle and we start with the B final lane two is Drew Westcote from Peachtree Ridge Knox Auerbach from Northview and three he's the only freshman in the entire event A and B final combined Nick White from Grayson and four Lassiter's Drew Cuttick from in lane five Thomas Lockie from Kennesaw Mountain in six James Dickey from North Gwinnett in seven his teammate Jay Cathcart in eight and Matt Grothouse, teammate of Auerbach in lane nine from Northview. The men swim the 100 freestyle fast throughout the entire thing. Yeah, it is a straight up sprint race and you're not gonna see many of them staying underwater for very long. They're gonna wanna, you saw them off the dive, pretty much get right up and start swimming and off each wall, they're gonna be taking two or three kicks and they're gonna wanna come up and start and start moving their arms and moving their legs, trying to get, get in, deep, in, in, in and out of each wall. In the prelims, they were pretty much even across the board. Lane number two, that is Drew Westcote from Peachtree really Ridge wow. was an this. early leader, but it's uh, there's less than half a second separating this entire field. That's the way we like it. And all of them flipping at almost exactly the same time. Anybody's race, uh, if I had to pick, I'd say maybe lane four or lane Drew five. Cuddy, I think he's starting to get out to a, I think he's got it. Drew cut it, trying to finish hard. Knox Arbach Good also finish. coming on. Arbach just getting out touched by cut it. Cut it will win the B final and get ninth place points. Second place going to lanes number three and four, a tie for second place. Something you'll see quite often in the uh, sprint races, Knox Arbach and Nick White from Northview and Grayson, respective, respectfully. We go to the A final now. Zach Marshall from Lassiter will be swimming in lane two. Davis Beauchamp from Walton in lane three. Michael Trice from Brookwood in lane four. Mill Creek, Chris Powell in lane five. Sean Slope from Wheeler in six. Michael Dugan from Marietta in seven. Devin Hughes from Parkview in eight. Michael Reagan from Decula in lane number nine. No repeat teams here. What are you looking to do if you're Brookwood or Parkview? Well, you're really hoping that Michael Trice can step up and take that top spot away from Chris Powell because in the A final and, and even the B final, the difference between first and second is a lot different between second and third. For first place in the A final, he scored 20 points. For second place, he scored 17. And for third, he scored 16. And down onto 11 points, it's a one point difference. So you really are hoping that uh, Michael Trice can step up there and take that top spot away from Chris Powell and hopefully make up some ground on Lassiter. We will see what happens. Last we checked, Parkview was leading the charge. They had about a 30-point lead over Brookwood. Brookwood really hoping Trice can step up. Is it possible for anyone to go beat Chris Powell from Mill Creek? I think if there's anyone, it's going to be either Michael Trice or Sean Slope there. And all, what Brookwood's looking for right now is for anyone to beat Chris Powell. Even if it means Sean Sloat stepping up and beating him, they want somebody to beat him so that he's not getting those first place points. So whether hope, Ideally, it would be Michael Trice, but if Sean Sloat can step up there and take the win away, that would be great. And that's from the opinion of a Parkview person and Brookwood wanting to see Michael Trice step up and win it. A little bit of a slow moving delay here as the officials go and talk with some of the swimmers. Just double checking a few things. The 100 freestyle is a four length race. It'll be very interesting to see who gets out there early. Expect Chris Powell to try and take off early. You got to imagine if Michael Trice is right there, he's going to make a statement to try and win this race. The state record in this event is held by Matthias Koski. He's never actually swum the event at state. The record was set in a 400 free relay, and you'll see you're allowed to do that as long as you are the, the first swimmer in the relay. It's just like 100 freestyle. Yeah, yeah. Matthias, that just shows how great he is. But watching this race right here, Michael Trice, 
or Chris Powell can take this. They're dead even coming into the finish. Sean Sloat looks like he's also trying to make his move. Trice trying to score those huge Trice. 20 he's points. He's going to get that finish Trice in. swinging his arms. Sean Sloat out wow. of nowhere. How did he sneak in there? I didn't <laughs> see that coming. Sean Sloat was in third place the entire race. And at the last second, he comes in there and sneaks in. And the, the team from Parkview has to be smiling a little bit. That shows you how important a perfect finish a is in a perfect race finish. Like that. Get your head down. You see that high five right there from Michael Trice and Chris Powell. Great sportsmanship all around. Third place goes to Powell from Mill Creek. Second to Brookwoods. Michael Trice and your champion from Wheeler in lane number one is Sean Sloat. Stay tuned. The girls are up next. You're watching the 2012 GHSA State Swimming and Diving Championships. Coming up next is the girls' 100-yard freestyle. Heat one, the consolation final is on deck. Right now in lane two, Morgan Lyons from Alpharetta, Madison Taylor from West Forsyth in three, Lauren O'Malley from Lassiter in four, Julianne Kirk from Parkview in five, Kaylin Thomas from North Forsyth in sixth, Morgan Fleming in seven from Parkview, Danielle Boards from Alpharetta in eight, and Mackenzie Payment from Harrison in nine. Do the girls swim this as a sprint or do they kind of do something a little different than the guys do? Sometimes, some swimmers back off a little bit from this race and try and save up. But you, you got it for girls or guys, you really got to attack this race from the start. You don't really have enough time to try and save up because if you let somebody get ahead of you, it's, it's really tough both physically and mentally to catch back up to them. Right now, the lead goes to lane number three. That is Madison Taylor of West Forsyth, a senior. We'll see if she can hang on to that lead. It looks like it has already been stolen away from her by lane number five. That is Julianne Kirk. Kirk trying to defend the first place statement from Morgan Fleming of Parkview and seven, and she will. And it will be Madison Taylor in third, Morgan Fleming in second, and Julianne Kirk in first place. Of course, that first place is actually a ninth place. We go now to the A final with some fast swimming on deck. Lane two, Jordan Drake from Lassiter. Lane three, Darby Wayner of Savannah Arts Academy. Four is Lexi Smith of Archer. Lane five is Kelsey Gouge of Brookwood. Katie Grover from Milton in six. Erica Staskovicius in Woods from Woodstock in seven. Melissa Postol in eight from Kennesaw Mountain. And Jennifer Rutledge from Collins Hill is in Lane nine, same strategy here? Yeah, definitely, you, especially for the A finalists right up here. They're, they're all great fast swimmers, and the winner's going to have to really attack it. And all these girls are trying to go up there and, and score points for the team. And if, if they back off at all, they're going to be left behind. So look, look, look for lanes four, five, and six really to get out after it here on this first, especially off the start, off this first 25. So we will try and see if anyone can separate themselves from the sprint that is this four-lap ruling event. And it's very tough. You, you can see, on, on especially the third lap, I've noticed that it tends to be the lap where people really start to separate themselves. Yeah, and, and when a coach talks to a swimmer about a race like this, and about a lot of sprint races, uh, the third part of the race is always the part that it's hardest for people. And they really try to emphasize that third lap because it's it's not it's a lot easier to get motivated to swim fast in that first 50 and to bring it home fast, but it's on that third lap that people sort of sort of lose lose their momentum and, and it's people that really attack that lap is that they're going to separate themselves. Up they go onto these very nice special blocks with the backstop on them. 
allows them to get a very powerful track start. You'll see them push off. It used to be that it was a totally flat mount. Brookwood, still your leader in the points competition. They've got Kelsey Gouge right there in the middle of the pool. She is your top seed. Challenging her is Lexi Smith from Archer. Archer, not a challenger for the state title, but definitely has a lot of swimmers here that can play the spoiler. Yeah, you've seen a lot of Archer swimmers up there in the top two seeds in a lot of these girls' events. And what that does is not necessarily going to put Archer in a position to win a team title, but it's taken points away from Brookwood and Parkview and Lasseter, those teams that are trying to win a team title. And Katie Grover of Milton, who's not really up there for a state title at this point, really trying to make an upset happen. Brookwood as well in on the mix. It's going to be either Kelsey Cows or Katie Grover. It's going to come down to the finish. Who is it? Oh, oh and it's Grover, Grover by six one hundredths of a second and an incredible finish. Gouge shortened up a little bit on again. her finish. She snuck in there. Great swim from both of the ladies. Gouge and Grover getting under that All-American consideration time. Gouge still scoring a nice 17 points for her team. So Brookwood not too upset. But we will be right back when we continue with the boys 500 freestyle. You're watching the 2012 GHSA State Swimming and Diving Championships. The 2012 GHSA Swimming and Diving Championships are brought to you by Verizon, America's largest, most reliable high speed wireless network. It's your social network, all mixed together. With Galaxy Nexus by Samsung, now you can organize your contacts into circles, like you do in real life. So you can choose what people see and what they don't. And with the speed of Verizon 4G LTE, you can chat as a group in a Google Plus Hangout without missing a beat. Introducing the first phone built for Android 4.0, only at Verizon. Thanks for meeting me here. No problem. You know, Farm Bureau Insurance has local agents making this kind of thing real easy. Well, your auto insurance has saved me a lot on old Becky here. That's great. And since our headquarters are local, we'll be here for old Becky for a long time. Harold, your dog swallowed the remote again. Who's that? Older Becky. Oh. Ugh. Real service, real people. That's Farm Bureau Insurance. Welcome back to the 2012 GHSA State Swimming and Diving Championships. We are on the boys 500 yard freestyle. Here's how it plays out. Lane two is Tyler Harper from Marietta. Three is Jack Gunning from Walton. Austin Goals from Duluth is in four. Ryan Lauschen from Alpharetta is in five. Six is Alfonso Castillo from Collins Hill. Seven is Parkview's Peter Meadows. Ryan Prince from Northview in eight, and Parkview's Nick Leavenworth in nine. The big story here, Parkview not getting their swimmers up into that A final like they were kind of hoping to on this race. Yeah, they were really hoping they could get some swimmers up into that A final to try and compete for some big points. And down here on the bottom of your screen, lane seven, eight, and nine, you see two Parkview swimmers and one Northview swimmer in lane eight. They're really going to be uh, trying to trying to contend with each other down here, trying to win this B final and make the most out of what is not an ideal situation. This is one of the most grueling events that you will experience as a swimmer. 20 laps, all of them at a breakneck pace. It is both a physical and emotional and a physical, emotional and a mental battle. Yeah, with the 500 freestyle, you're not going to see uh, as much sprinting as you do in, in, in one of some of the shorter races. You're going to see some of these guys try and go out on their arms, save their legs for the end of the race, while trying to keep a good pace with the people next to them. They're going to be really keeping an eye on the people next to them. Whereas if you look at a 50 freestyle, they're not watching who, who's next to them at all. Uh, they've got their head down. But these guys are really watching who's next to them, trying to set a pace so they can take off on the last, on the last part. Jack Gunning from Walton out to an early lead, although that's the way that it was during the prelims as well. So expect for him to potentially fade, although uh, we've seen a lot of people prove that statement wrong all day today. And Gunning will maybe uh, try and hang on. A lot of young talent, do you have to be 
uh, in the senior or junior or whatever class in order to be one of the top 500 swimmers? No, you really don't. It's not like some of the sprint events where it's all about being older, being stronger. These events are more about who's got more endurance and who's mentally tougher, which doesn't necessarily have to come with age or with, with more experience in swimming. And if you look at it, uh, Jack Gunning, he, it looks like he, I, I think he's got a really sh good shot to hold on to this, hold on to this lead because he came into the, he came into prelims yesterday with the top, with one of the top times of the people that are in this, uh, in this heat right now. And it looks like he might have backed off a little bit going into, going into finals. Yeah, Jack Gunning, not the best prelim swim for him. It gives him a little bit of confidence against these guys, although Walton would probably hope that he could get up into that A final. He is still in the lead at this point. That was the halfway mark. That was Jack Gunning. Second place is all the way over there in lane number nine. That's Nick Leavenworth of Parkview. Parkview would really love to go one, two in this race. And if uh, Gunning hangs on to first place, they want second and third at least. Yeah, definitely. They want to score as many points out of this, out of this event as they can and out of this heat. And it's going to be the teams that not only score the big points in the A final, but they can collect those points in the B finals that are going to be the ones really trying to get by for that uh, team championship. We've seen it before. We've seen it this year. The small points, the little swims that you don't think matter make all the difference. That one point of just making it back to the B final could be the difference between a state title and a state runner up. Right now, still in the lead is Jack Gunning. Nick Leavenworth in lane number nine is still in second place. And third is Peter Meadows from Parkview as well. Him and Leavenworth trying to hang on to score as many points as they can. Remember, the highest they can go, even if they swim an incredible race, is 10th and 11th if they were to remain at second and third. The highest Gunning can go, even if he were to break the state record, is ninth place. That state record that we mentioned might be getting broken in the next heat, but we'll get to that one in just a second. At what point do these swimmers try and start separating themselves from their opponents? Is it uh, always at the beginning, always in the middle, always at the end? It's usually, usually when you see the great ones, they're going to try and pace themselves at the beginning of the race and then really make that try and make a move almost at the end of the race with about 150 left you got we got a 50 left right now so hopefully some of the people back in second and third are going to try and make a move try and take some of those spots away can anyone catch run jack gunning that's the question on deck right now it doesn't look like it's going to happen real smooth right now gunning looking very good maybe even will beat the time that he was entered into the meet with if he continues at the pace he's going Right now, the battle is for second place. Lane five, that's Ryan Lauschen of Alpharetta, who's moved up to battle. Lane number six, Alfonso Castillo Great of swim. Collins Hill. And it is Castillo that gets the second place. Lauschen getting third. Leavenworth and Meadows, the two Parkview swimmers, finishing in fourth and fifth. Both of them were in lanes seven and nine. We go to the A final now. A lot of fast swimming that we're about to see. Lane number two, Michael Kinney from Northview. Lane three, Cody Beekmeyer from Collins Hill. Lane four, Aiden Sweeney from Brookwood. Matthias Koski, the state record holder in this event as of yesterday when he set it in the prelim session at a 419.11. Cody Rule in lane six from Alpharetta. He's the only other All-American, and that is an All-American consideration. Lane number seven is Powell Brooks. Lane eight is Thomas Parabonio, a mouthful is what that is, and Ethan Webster, Parabonio and Webster are teammates at North Gwinnett, and Pal Brooks is from North Croc, Norcross. Two Northview swimmers, two North Gwinnett swimmers, one Norcross, one Alpharetta, one Collins Hill, one Brookwood, a noticeable absence, that's Parkview. They did the best they could to score those points in the race right before this. What does Matthias Koski need to do to break his own state record? Well, he's going to have, if he wants to break, the, to win the race for him, it's pretty much set. He, he just has to go out and swim his race. If he wants to get under 419, he's got to really go out after it fast. And he's got he's to rely on, you saw him in the 200 freestyle. He can bring it home. But the, the challenge for him is to, be get, out fat, to get out fast because he's not a sprinter. He's a distance swimmer. He's 200, 500 mile. That, those sorts of events. So if he wants to break that state record, go 418, which would be completely unheard of in high school swimming. 
he's got to go out fast and get, get out to a big lead. Don't be surprised if you see him almost lap a few people in this race. Yeah, to give you a picture of how fast Koski has been in high school swimming, there have only in the history of the event been six swimmers under 420 ever. And Koski made himself the sixth one yesterday. So we will see if he has the ability to make it happen here at the end of this race. He was out fast in the 200 free. We'll see if he takes that same approach here in the 500 free. It looks like he's doing just that. You also got to wonder, though, if he's going to try and save up, if he's going to actually go for the state record, or if he's going to try and just get out to a lead and save up for those later relays where his team might really need him to win a state championship. He is a senior. He wants to set his mark. We've talked to Coach Colin Maloney a few times, and Maloney spoke about his discipline in the pool and his discipline in school and how overall he is a supporting character. He does not consider himself to be any more spectacular than anyone else. And that's such a quality that you, you love to see in a swimmer of his talent. Matthias Koski is out early, as is Rule in second place in lane six. Expect Rule to kind of run away from everyone else. He's going to drag along Aiden Sweeney and Powell Brooks. Sweeney, another senior. Brooks is only a sophomore. Aiden Sweeney has already committed to Georgia as well. Him and Koski will be teammates next year. But for right now, the battle is on the line. Yeah, it, it, it really, I just don't see anyone being even close to Matthias Koski in this. And it's going to be its going to be really cool to watch him and Aiden Sweeney next year at Georgia compete with some of those great Georgia distance swimmers. Koski is right even with where he was in the prelims. He was 115.50. He was 115.74. Two tenths of a second is pretty negligible in the 500 free when you're talking about the middle of the race. Look for him to be right around the 141 to 140 high mark to even be on state record pace. 140 is ticking by. There goes 141. That's when he flips his 142. Oh, he's slowing down a little bit. And you may have been right. He may be saving up a little bit for those relays at the end of the night. But to put his speed in perspective, his t him saving up for in a 500 freestyle, his 200 freestyle time would have put maybe, I, th I think he might have meddled in the, two, in the 200 actually, freestyle. He actually, yeah, in the 200 freestyle, had Matthias Kolsky swum that time in the 200 freestyle, he would have actually, he'd have been fifth. But it's incredible because he's still got a 300 to swim after this. And this is this. him saving up, too. This, this isn't even him at a dead sprint. Yeah, I would it's suggest. It's just incredible. I would suggest that uh, Matthias Kolsky is indeed saving up. And uh, the reason for that being, Northview has a very talented 400 free relay. They do, and they really that that last event is going to be really pivotal in in a close in a close meet like this. A lot of it comes down to that last relay, and if you win it, that's six points. Uh, that's a six point difference between first and second in that last relay. So he really wants to save up a lot of his energy for that last one. Yeah, and they, uh, all those points I believe get doubled. So that's great. What about the state record? Do they have a chance to go after that? I think they do. They were only two seconds off at prelims, and you got to think that they they couldn't have been going at their hardest in prelims. They, I mean, that hundred freestyle is not an event you want to be, you know, sprinting in prelims when you're going to wear yourself out. So you got to you got to think that they can make that that two-second drop that's not that hard to come by. Just to give you an idea, Koski looks like he's cruising right now. He's cruising at one of the fastest times in state history. In fact, that time right there ranks third at the 300, or excuse me, at the 350 mark. This is the 400 mark, 327.40. He's four tenths of a second above where he was in prelims when he set the new state record. He would love to get under that 419 mark. A little bit of pride on the line here, not for the state record. Koski's lifetime best was when he swam that 419.11 in prelims. You kind of want to just beat your own time at a certain point. Yeah, you re as a swimmer, you really don't want to go you don't want to have your times go up. You want to continually have good drops, and that really gives you momentum the rest of the race. Koski is now back under state record pace. He's one-tenth of a second under it. The crowd is starting to figure it out as the announcer clues them in. And Cody Rule still having a great swim there, but you see them passing in the middle as Koski runs away with it. Three or 419.11 is the record. He's Koski gonna coming get it. in. He's going to get it. it. Wow. And he's at a 418. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that is the third fastest wow. swim in United States swimming history. 
Third fastest swim in United States swimming history. I'll give you a picture. Peter Vandeke, who used to be the world record holder in this same event, he owns the pool record. Koski was only 10 seconds behind him, and he was six years younger than Vanderke was when Vanderke set that record. An incredible swim for Koski. Incredible. But also, we need to give some props there to Cody Rule in the middle of the pool, yeah, who just got his own All-American automatic qualifying time uh, for a second place won, effort. That would have won the four, I mean, yep. five time. It was a fantastic swim from him, and third place goes to, Lane, uh, to uh, Powell Brooks from Norcross. The girls are up next with their 500 free. Stay tuned, you're watching the 2012 GHSA State Swimming and Diving Championships. Up now is the girls' 500-yard freestyle, the B final on deck. Olivia Clark from Lassiter in two, Hannah Martin from Etowan three, Carolyn Bonfield, Carolyn Bonfield from Jenkins in four, Frederic Lefebvre from Mill Creek in five, Karen Suija from Centennial in six, seven is Anna Johns from Brookwood, Lauren Oglesby from Etowah is in eight, and Kelly Price from Hillgrove is in lane nine. The girls 500 free, a little bit different than the guys 500 free, not quite as a, as much of a sprint. Yeah, yeah, they're trying to, they'll try and pace themselves a little bit more, but watch, watch for the girls that want to win this race, try and get out a little bit here on the first part, try and separate themselves because down the line, these girls are not going to be able to, not going to be able to come back as hard on whoever's out front and watch, watch for them to try and get out front right here, get some clean water. We will see what happens on this race. The girls will pace themselves, as was mentioned, and you can see that right now if you look across the field. Uh, there's four, five, six girls all within about a second and a half to two seconds of each other. The early leader is Karen Suija from Centennial. She's a freshman. Same deal here as with the guys as far as any age can really fight in the 500. Yeah, it's, it's it, even more so with the girls, like I was saying in the last event. Girls, bo or girls' bodies mature a little bit sooner, and it, it gives them an advantage younger than guys. Than guys. And keep an eye on uh, lane seven here for Brookwood, Anna Johns. She's the only, of, of the four top teams in points right now, she's the only one in the B final right here. And if she could step up and win this B final, that would be some big points for Brookwood. Brookwood, Peachtree, or Brookwood, Peachtree Ridge, Kennesaw Mountain, and Lassiter all have swimmers up in that A final. Uh, Parkview does not. They will be really hoping that something crazy happens and they don't get hurt too bad, but they are in fourth place, only half a point behind Peachtree Ridge. It was a point and a half behind Kennesaw Mountain. Then the gap gets huge, and it's 28 points between Brookwood and Kennesaw Mountain. Brookwood will be really hoping that Muller can make another amazing swim against Madison Jacoby in that 500 free. We'll get to that one in just a moment. Right now, we've got the B final, and your leader is in lane number six, and that is still Karen Suija. She's followed closely by Frederic Lefebvre, and she is um, both of them are followed by lane number three, and that is Hannah Martin of Etowah. Frederic is from Mill Creek, and Suija from Centennial. Anna Johns in lane seven, fading a little bit, but still trying to hang on. What, what is it about the kick? I keep seeing the kick and keep realizing it's kind of, you see who's got a good kick, and you see them constantly yeah. winning. Yeah, it's. 
the kick is probably one of the most, well, if not the most important part of a distance event like this. It's the people that can keep it steady throughout the first part of the race, but then really have the energy to bring it, bring it back at the last part of the race. And we just passed, we've got a little over, uh, we've been a, gotten a little over halfway through the race now. So watch in the next couple laps, some of these leaders are gonna start bringing their legs up and those are the people that are going to really try and get put some separation between themselves and the rest of the field. They're flipping almost in synchronous as they come up on to lap number 14. This means that they've got just over a quarter of the way to go. Six laps left in this race. Moving up into first now is uh, Anna Johns in lane big seven, the freshman. Right and slam. if they can get a freshman to show up and score them some big points, Brookwood really putting a hurting on uh, anybody else that could be making a move, especially uh, someone like Kennesaw Mountain that only has one swimmer in that A final. Peachtree yeah. Ridge, though, does have two swimmers in that A final. So this, there, and by no means is this over. Yeah, by, by no means is it over, but the B finals and being able to score those points to the swimmers that did make it in the A final and be able to make make the most of their situation in the B final, that's really crucial to winning a team championship. It's not just the people up there in the A final, it's swimmers like Anna Johns, freshman, coming in here, you know, it's their first meet and they're coming in and scoring big points in the B final. All right, now Anna Johns really hanging on. Imagine running a mile if you were in peak physical condition. That is what it is like for these girls to swim this 500. It's almost equivalent to the running mile. Anna Johns uh, out of nowhere with some of that incredible energy, almost as if she was playing mind games with the rest of the kick field. Coming up a little bit off this last turn, she's going to really bring her kick into it to try and get herself home. Second place looks like it's become more of a battle. An awesome turn right there from Carolyn Bonfield. Excuse me, Frederic Lefebvre in lane number five, but. Karen Suija not to be outdone. The battle for second place is a big one. Who's it going to be? And it is Suija in second place. Third wow. place going to Frederic from Mill Creek. Karen Suija from Centennial is in second place. And Anna Johns from Brookwood scoring big points. And you can see it on her face. Very happy to be supporting the team cause. I'm sure they're happy to have a fresh. She got under five minutes. That's a big milestone for a female distance runner. Females do not. Yeah, the five minute mark is the kind of one of those promised lands for a high school 500 freestyler. Almost all of our uh, freestylers in the heat two of this event are under five minutes. Only two of them are outside of that mark. Allie Crenshaw in lane two is from Lassiter. Hannah Terranova from North Gwinnett is in three. Rebecca Postol from Kennesaw is in lane four. Madison Jacoby from Harrison is in lane five. Rachel Muller from Brookwood is in lane six. We saw an amazing battle between the two of them and the 200 free. Expect yet another version of that right here and the 500 free. Sarah Williford from Lasseter is in seven. Tinsley Flint from Peachtree Ridge in eight. And her teammate, Savannah Root, is in lane nine. Peachtree Ridge will be looking to move up as many spots as they can here. And they've got an advantage down there in lanes eight and nine because they can talk to each other before the race and say, this is how we need to swim the race. This is the strategy we need to do to move up. And they can they can help pace each other up to the front of the field. If they can both go out fast, both use each other as motivation, they can really, and a lot of people aren't going to be seeing them down there in lane eight and nine. They're going to be looking towards the middle of the pool. So they can really sneak up and take this away from some people. You can almost see the nervousness written on their faces as we pan across the scene there. These girls know what's going on. There is a lot at stake as they are called up to the blocks. They know that this race is a big deal. Probably one of the harder things is that there's 20 laps between them and those big coveted points. Yeah, they've got to they've got to really stay focused right here at the beginning of the race and not not worry about how because it's going to hurt and, and they've got to just get past that get past the fact that it's going to hurt really bad a lot of talent in the water we had five swimmers under the all-american consideration time the two in the middle jacoby and muller from harrison and brookwood all both of them were under the all-american automatic qualifying time so they will be on that all-american list Although they didn't need the 500 to make that list, they already accomplished that in the 200 free. They'll be looking to better their time. The state record in this event is a 440.93 set by Elizabeth Hill in 2004. And uh, both of us were there to see that. And, and 
that was one of those swims that you knew one going to be beat for a long, long time. Yeah, I was I was teammates with Elizabeth at Westminster when she set that record, and you know you could tell just from how much she won that race by it was almost as much as Matthias Koski just won that last boys event. She was that far ahead of everybody else, and you know it's going to be a while for anyone touches that. An incredible that. swim from her back then. We're looking forward to a few incredible swims right here. As you see, flipping first at the 100-yard mark is Madison Jacoby. Rachel Muller is actually in third because ahead of her is Sarah Williford. Don't sleep on Williford. She is a very talented swimmer. In fact, last year, Williford, excuse me, Williford was on a uh, few of those very, very fast uh, relays from Lassiter as well as finished ninth in the 500 and has only improved since last year, dropping four seconds from last year to this year. So uh, expect to see her really try and stay up and yeah. almost believe that she belongs in the race. Yeah, that, and that's, that's key is having that mental toughness that no matter what, you can stay in this race. And I think, with, I think something that's really interesting is that uh, you saw in the 200 freestyle, Rachel Muller was the top seed, and Madison Jacoby took away that title from her. But now it's flipped, and Madison Jacoby's in the top seed, and Rachel Muller's looking to you know, get some revenge from that 200 freestyle. Madison Jacoby looking very, very smooth as we get to the 200-yard mark. Jacoby still in first. Now up in second is Rebecca Postol from Kennesaw Mountain. They would love to see her finish in second place ahead of Rachel Muller from Brookwood and get some of those points. Currently, Kennesaw Mountain trails Brookwood in the total point shakeout. So the uh, Kennesaw Mountain folk would like to see their freshmen get up there and score those huge 17 points for second place. I would say Madison Jacoby looks like she's trying a little bit too hard on the first part of this race, but she proved me wrong in the 200 freestyle. Maybe that's just how she swims. She, she likes to have that fast turnover and is, has that endurance. Whereas you look up at Rebecca Postal and she's got a really smooth, long stroke staying right on Madison Jacoby's hip. And uh, she, she might try and make a move here in the next couple laps to try and to try and take over the first place. Eight laps left in this race. Still a lot can happen. You got to start thinking if you're Rebecca Postol, I'm still up in this race. I can go out there and win it. Yeah, she's definitely still in it. She's right there on her hip. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if you see her get over right on the lane line trying to draft a little bit. But it looks like she's actually trying to make her move right now, trying to take away this top spot. The mind games ensue, and Postol has closed the gap even more. Only three eight or three tenths of a sec second separate them. Falling off of the paces, Rachel Muller in six, although she's still having a great swim, so you can't really count her out too much. In first is still Jacoby Postol trying to make something happen. Jacoby's Jacoby is really trying to shut the door. She's moved all the way over to the other side of her lane. Yeah, and she's, she's really getting some distance off these turns, and then Postal is really catching her in the pool, but Jacoby really makes uh, extends her lead every time she goes into a wall. And that's really that's a that's a that's a big time thing when uh, Postol's really trying hard to catch up to her. The last hundred is in the water. Postol falling back behind Jacoby, but she is comfortably in second place. As long as nothing crazy happens, Muller will finish in third place. The gaps are very large across the board. Trying to separate herself even more is. Madison Jacoby. Now we got to start be think start thinking. Can Rebecca Postal get under that All-American automatic qualifying time? Right now she is on pace to make that happen. It Postal. looks like she's tightening up a little bit. She might have made her move a little bit too early. Maybe so, but right now it is all oh, here she comes, Jacoby's Whoa, race. Look at her! Wow, an amazing kick. It might be a Maybe moment too, it too late. late. And it looks like it is going to be a little too late, but she will sneak under that All-American qualifying standard. Congratulations to her. You see the smile on Madison Jacoby's face. A huge swim for her, a wonderful swim, actually, for all of those girls. And Rachel Muller, not a bad swim for her, a 452, still right under that All-American automatic qualifying standard. And Postol scoring big points for Kennesaw Mountain. We will resume competition with the very exciting 200-yard freestyle relay. Stay tuned. You're watching the 2012 GHSA State Swimming and Diving Championships.
missing second. The time of four minutes, 15.11 seconds. That is under the automatic All-American standard representing the Kennesaw Mountain Mustangs. Rebecca Postal. In the 2012 Georgia Five Day State Champion, the ladies 500 yard freestyle with a winning time of 449.13. That also in automatic All-American standard representing the Harrison Royas and on the way to Florida State, Madison Chippo. Up next is the boys 200 yard freestyle. Lane two is Woodstock, three is Milton, four is Northview, five is Etowah, six is Peachtree Ridge, seven is Norcross, eight is Alpharetta, nine is Grayson. 200 free relay, not a whole lot of thought goes into this. It's all reactions. No, this is the sort of race that you have to practice for because you really, it really just can't put a lot into it. It's really reaction off the block, and it's great relay exchanges. And like the fifth, like the individual 50 freestyle, you got to get in and out of your turns really fast. And up in that A final are those big name teams. Down in this B final, noted a very noticeable uh, existence in this B final is Northview and Alpharetta both failing to get somebody up into that A final. That'll hurt them in the battle for the top spot among or for the state title. Yeah, they're really hoping, and Peachtree Ridge is down here in the B final as well. They're really hoping that they can get up there and it, uh, it, it's ideally take the top spot in this B final. Parkview, Brookwood, and Lassiter were three out of your top four seeds in that A final. They are currently your three top teams in the battle for the state title. We will see how that shakes out for right now. Northview and Alpharetta really need to get up and show what they've got if they're going to make any sort of fight for that state title. And the thing that we notice whenever we see this race is that a lot of this is emotion, but the swimmers have to discipline themselves not to get too antsy. Yeah, you really it's it really is a lot of emotion. You'll see the teams behind the blocks really firing themselves up, but if you let that take control too much of the race, you're gonna you're gonna start spinning your arms too much and kick it and not and not kicking enough and it's gonna really wear you out even even if it's just two laps it can really take a toll on you into the water they go everyone will be spinning their arms this is such an exciting event get ready for it don't blink because it will go by quick. At the wall, it looks like lane number four, Northview, is out ahead. That's Knox Auerbach, their freshman, very talented. He'll be followed by Jack Derrickson, their senior captain. Looks like lane number three getting into Gotta the mix is Milton. Here. Perfect exchange, a great takeoff by lane number four. And that is Northview. Don't be fooled by their yellow caps. They are still the Northview Titans. They don't typically wear yellow. Here lane comes number Milton three. Up in lane three. Yeah, look out for lane number nine down there, though. That is Grayson. Two great swimmers in Mason McIntyre and Ryan Murray leading off the charge. Great exchange there in lane number four for Northview, yeah. as well as lane number three, and that's all coaching right there. Yeah, you, that's something you really got to practice. That's not something that comes naturally in the great real exchange. It's something you work on every day at practice. Both teams with extremely talented head and assistant coaches. It's no surprise that they're leading the charge. Northview leaving it up to Michael Kinney, typically a distant swimmer. He had another great exchange. Great exchanges all the way across the board. It's tough to see who's in the lead except, or who's in second place. Northview trying to hang on behind the swim of Michael Kinney. Lane number eight is Alpharetta. They're also getting it on the mix. A perfect scenario for them would be to overtake everybody except uh, He's Northview got the trying advantage to hang out there on. Some clean water, but watch out, watch out. It goes Peachtree Ridge. Peachtree Ridge in six, trying to make a charge. Oh, Michael Kinney out touching him, hanging on, and everyone finishing within two seconds of each other. Very, very close. Third place goes to lane number five. That is Etowah. Second place goes to lane number six, Peachtree Ridge and Northview winning that B final, which means ninth place points, exactly what they needed after the disaster, or semi, seemingly disaster of them not making that A final. We go to the A final now, and Collins Hill will be starting us off in lane two, North Gwinnett in three, Mill Creek in four, Parkview your top seed in lane number five, Lassiter in lane six, Brookwood is in seven, 
Marietta is in eight. Centennial is in nine. This is going to be a very, very close race between Parkview and Lassiter. Uh, Mill Creek will try and get in there. Brookwood really needs something to get them up into this race. Yeah, they really, they really need to try and find some part of their race that they can improve because they need to get up there and get a top three position. And whether that's putting their first swimmers, making their first swimmers their fastest so they can get out some clean water or putting them at the back end so they can come home on the people that are out in front of them. Currently, Parkview is leading the way in the overall points battle in the prelims. Parkview had some of the faster swimmers, all four of their swimmers breaking into that 21-50 free territory. Lassiter only had one swimmer on the 22 territory. Brookwood had all three, or had three of their swimmers in the 22 territory, but they anchored with Mike Michael Trice at yeah, 20.7, 20. 20. which is incredible, although he's been even faster than that. We can expect to see him really trying to reel in everybody. These three teams did not get to see each other in the prelims. How does that affect how they're going to enter the finals? Well, in the prelims, like you said, the prelims heats are circle seated, which means that they put the top three swimmers in different uh, uh, relays in different heats. And so now that they're facing each other, they've really got to motivate themselves not to get caught up in the wash that's going to happen right here in the pool. Yep, get out early, get out fast. You do not want to be caught in the wake that is returning from your competition. The state record in this event is a 124.85 set by Wesleyan last year. It might not be touchable. We uh, have a few teams that could sneak under that AA All-American consideration time. Up early and out in front is lane number five between Devin Hughes. Hughes will try and give them the lead. You want that clean water out in front. Yeah, look at if you look at the pool right now, it's almost entirely white water, and that's a, that's really hard to swim through as a 50 freestyler. So you want to be out in front of that where it's a little bit cleaner, and you and you're able to breathe a little bit better, and uh, you don't have as much waves hitting you while you're. Great swimming. swims from all of our leadoff swimmers, lane five, four, and six, and that is Parkview, Mill Creek, then Lassiter, yeah. Brookwood Parkview's struggling really to sleep up. Parkview with some great exchanges. This is where everything changes right here, though. Remember, Brookwood is going to have the incredible anchor Watch leg. If they're anywhere six, close. Lassiter. Here comes Lassiter. Lassiter trying to get back into the battle. Parkview with a little bit of a stranglehold over everybody going to Jeffrey Carter. Carter split a 21-9-7, the slowest out of their four splits in the prelims, but don't think he's going to be slacking off here in the finals. Great he's exchange. off. Lassiter is off. Brookwood comes in. Michael Trice going into the water. It doesn't look like he's going to be able to actually catch up. He doesn't have enough room to catch these other guys. He's fighting all of that ugly white water that Richmond mentioned. Still trying to hold on is Parkview. Lassiter making a move at the last second. It's going to come Put down to the down. touch. Put Both of down. them not breathing, and it is going to be Parkview. 125-71 wow. just off of making themselves our newest All-Americans, but they did get the All-American consideration time. I can't imagine that time's not going to make them all -Americans. I would imagine it will see, we will see them on that All-American list. Third place going to lane number four. That was Mill Creek, and second place going to to Lassiter, Parkview, your champion, Brookwood, as a note, finishing in fifth place. Still some good points there, but definitely not what they were hoping for. We will continue with the girls' 200 freestyle relay, just as exciting. Stay tuned. You're watching the 2012 GHSA Swimming and Diving Championships.
Up now is the girls 200 yard freestyle relay. Lane two, West Forsyth, three Norcross, four Collins Hill, five Peachtree Ridge, six is Archer, seven North Cobb, eight Camden County, nine Duluth. Same sort of deal with the girls, close exchanges. Yeah, you really gotta, you, you gotta nail those relay exchanges. It's, I, it's ideal that you have a perfect finish and a perfect exchange, but you'd rather, you'd rather, if you could choose one, you'd rather have the guy in the water or the girl in the water have a really perfect finish because 90% of the time the team gets, gets disqualified is because the person in the water has a short or a long finish, and that messes up the person on the block. Lane four is Collins Hill. They take the early lead behind the swim of Jennifer Rutledge. Lane seven is North Cobb. Julie Storch has moved them up into second place. Lane eight is Camden County, and Elizabeth Willis was their leadoff swimmer. She moved them into third place. Breaking away from the pack is Collins Hill. That's Anna Burdett swing, swimming the second leg. She is also a senior. A little bit slower of a transition for the four, third swimmer of Mindy Ross, not using that relay swing style that you see most of the swimmers using in the transition. She's still holding on great, though. She, she didn't have a great exchange, like you said, but she's really tearing it up into the turn. Still holding on to that lead is Collins Hill, but now challenging them is Ken, is uh, Kendall Matt, or Madison Kendall, excuse me, from North Cobb, and they great are now within out of North Cobb five there seconds. Chelsea. Wow, what a great! You're exactly right. What a great exchange. They are now right neck and neck. Who can win it? That is Brooke Phillips from Collins Hill, and North uh, Cobb's got the advantage into the turn. Chelsea oh, Bame wow. for another great turn. Just great fundamentals. Looks like North Cobb's running away with it a little bit. Collins Hill trying to hang on, trying to sneak back up in there. It is North Cobb, 141.78, bettering their time from the prelims by three seconds. They win the B final. Third place was a tie between lanes five and six between Peachtree Ridge and Archer and Collins Hill, as we said, finished second. A final on the way. And in lane number two is Walton, three is North Gwinnett, four is Brookwood, five Parkview, six is Lassiter, seven is Mill Creek, eight is Etowah, and nine is Woodstock. These girls, uh, you, you don't see any All-American considerations. You don't see any, any All-American automatics because the teams don't necessarily put all their emphasis on the 200 freestyle relay. Yeah, you'll see with the 200 medley and the 200 freestyle relay, they might try and divvy up their faster swimmers, especially with the, some of the smaller schools. They might not have as much depth, and they've got two or three fast swimmers, and they've got more of a chance to win in the or to lose in the 200 freestyle relay. And so they might try and defer some of their faster swimmers to the other relays. Kind of rolling a dice when you talk about the 200 freestyle relay. It just takes one slip on the block to lose it. 400 freestyle relay, that's not the case. And the 200 medley relay is a more of a specialty race. You don't see it as much there. Parkview and Lassiter are right in the middle of the pool. They will both be looking to score some big points and sneak back into this meet. Brookwood really kind of has a stranglehold at last check on the swim meet, but that can definitely be changed. We saw in the 4A meet, everything can change with the DQ, and uh, that's the that's something that you fear as a coach. Yeah, you really, you really, that's, that's a nightmare situation, especially on a relay like this where you only have three of them in a meet and they score so many points that if you don't, if you don't come out, if you come out with no points in a relay, that really puts you to disadvantage. For the 30 points meet. separating Brookwood and Peachtree Ridge. Uh, as well as Kennesaw Mountain and Parkview, all three of them about 30 points behind. You notice we asked you, you don't see Kennesaw Mountain in this, in this event. They're not in the B or A final. Ken Kennesaw Mountain, yep, definitely absent here. They don't necessarily have that depth. They have great diving as well. That's one of the reasons that they're up in that spot. Peachtree Ridge will be looking to, uh, or Peachtree Ridge will be watching as Look at Etowah they, down there in lane eight, getting out to an early lead. Peachtree Ridge was in that other heat. They did not finish in the top of that heat, so or they were third in that heat. So they will just sit and watch and hope for the best. It's really up to Parkview to try and make a move here. If anyone's going to make a move on Brookwood, Brookwood's in lane four. They are trailing Parkview by just a fraction of a percent. 
Parkview does have the lead, but it's still anybody's race. It all comes down to exchanges. Parkview a little slow on the transition. Brookwood with a great transition, getting into the water, but not a great breakout. Didn't make Mill up Creek any of that. Stepping up right here in lane seven. She had a great exchange. Lane number one also, or two, excuse me, Walton still in on the mix. Don't count them out, although uh, lane two, you kind of wonder what happened if they are going to come through and win this. Walton with not the fastest anchor leg, but they're still swimming great. Parkview, another slow exchange for Parkview. Yeah. Playing it safe? Yeah, she, I, it looked like she played it a little safe there, not using the arm swing, but some, some swimmers use that, and it looks like it's going to her advantage right now. Definitely getting a lead right there in lane five. Not the greatest turn for Parkview. Brookwood breaks wow. out very well. Brookwood needs to get into second place to score some big points. Fighting them off in lane number seven is Mill Creek. It's going to be Brookwood or Mill Creek is second. And it is Mill Creek. Parkview going to be high-fiving Mill Creek pretty soon here, thanking them for getting them some more points. It's four, 12 points, or excuse me, six points from first to second place in the relays. A whopping 40 points if you are the winner. And Parkview just racked all of that up in first place. Second going to Mill Creek, third going to Brookwood. We'll be right back with the boys' 100 backstroke. You're watching GHSA 2012 Swimming and Diving State Championships. Coming down to the final races of this 2012 state championship. We are now on the boys' 100 backstroke in lane number two in the B final from Peachtree Ridge, Guido Sakagi. Lane three, Kyle Crandall from Collins Hill, Todd Brannon from Norcross in four, Ben Taylor from Shiloh in five, Cody Beekemeyer from Collins Hill in six, Gabriel Downey from Woodstock in seven, Connor Blair from Centennial in eight, Peter Meadows from Parkview in lane number nine. All the swimmers get in the water a little bit different of a start here. Yeah, and it's it's a little bit tougher on these Georgia Tech blocks because a lot of the pools they're used to swimming in have gutters. And a lot of swimmers will put their hands in the gutters for the start, but they all have to put them up with the blocks here. And it's, it's going to be interesting to see how they get off the start here. A clean start all the way across. You see some of their feet kick up out of the water. You see them stay underwater for a long time. Yeah, that's where that's where backstroke and butterfly are really similar is that you're almost faster underwater than you are swimming, swimming the actual stroke. And that's why a lot of these swimmers and a lot of the great Olympic swimmers and international swimmers will stay underwater as long as they can to try and maintain that speed out of the turns. Legally, you can only stay underwater for 15 yards of the race, just over halfway down the pool. And the, the lead right now is Kyle Crandall of Collins Hill. He's followed by Ben Taylor in lane number five. Taylor trying to make some points Happened for Shiloh, who uh, has kind of fallen by the wayside a little bit. And uh, Peachtree Ridge trying to score some points there. That's Guido Sakagi. Uh, but N Parkview really in lane nine, hoping that their junior Peter Meadows can score them some points. Got up into sixth place. That's, that's Sixth place from, uh, it, it, that means 14th place moving up from 16th. An improvement is always a good thing. Our winner, though, was in lane number six, and that's from Collins Hill. That's Cody Beekmeyer, and he scored a lot of points. That's the only freshman that was in that field. We move now to the A final in lane two from Milton Johnny Dodero. Alpharetta's Patrick Cusick, the only freshman in this field in lane three. Alex Heldman from Northview, the newcomer to Northview. An out-of-state transfer in lane four. Sam Lewis from Milton in five. Zach Bunner in six from Lassiter. Roy, Rory Martin from Parkview in seven. Jared Blanton from Etowah in eight. And Thomas Locke 
from Kennesaw Mountain in lane number nine. Top seed in this event is Sam Lewis. He and Zach Bunner will battle it out. Both of them already have their All-American qualifying standard. They are both All-Americans in this event. What's left to get? Well, uh, if you're Sam Lewis, you're trying to come back. He had a, he had a little bit of a disappointment in the 100 fly and got upset and, was, and finished second in that race. So he's looking to try and maintain his top seed here and come away with the state title. But it's going to be tough against Zach Bunner, who you already saw win the 200 IM earlier in the meet. Zach Bunner is a swimmer for Lassiter. Currently, they are in second place in this meet. Brookwood with no swimmers in this entire event making it back. Their highest seeded, in fact, they didn't even swim a backstroker in the entire meet. Uh, so they were planning on this. So they'll just sit and watch as points are scored. Northview with the transfer Alex Heldman in here. They'll look to try and pass uh, Brookwood and move up into that third place spot. Alpharetta with Patrick Cusick, the freshman. They'll look to try and make up ground. Not enough points for them to move up and at uh, in any more than fifth place, but definitely can close that gap. We'll see what happens. A lot can play out in this storyline right now. Parkview really hoping for a good swim from Rory Martin. Technically, he could shut the meet down if he had a, a, a win here. Yeah, I, if he could step up and win this race, that would be the swim of a lifetime. I, I'm not really sure I see him beating Sam Lewis or Zach Bunner, but if he can, if he can even step up and get third place in this event, that would be huge for Parkview and help, help them really seal the deal for them uh, as we come into the last few events here. Zach Bunner had the fastest 50 backstroke split in Georgia history when he led off the 200 medley relay, including Peter Marshall, who is the state record holder. Nine one hundredths of a second separate the two of them at the turn. It's anybody's race. Lu Bunner stays underwater a little bit longer than Lewis. He's a little bit more powerful of a kicker. Both really of their stroke tempo is slowing down. You watch Bunner. He really explodes out of that underwater. But look at Sam Lewis there on that last turn. Sam wow. Lewis really exploding into this last 25, really turning it on, trying to make it happen. He's going to finish at a 48.85. Right and that record that we never thought could be broken, he came very, very close to, dangerously close if you're Peter Marshall. And he gets that first place. And look at that high five and the hug between the two of them, both of them going lifetime bests, both of them breaking into that 50 range uh, uh, just awesome swims from both of them third place goes to lane number three and that's patrick cusick the freshman scoring some big points fourth place went to alex heldman and with those points heldman moves his team ahead of brookwood into third place we will continue with the drama as the girls swim the hundred backstroke right after these awards. You're watching the 2012 GHSA State Swimming and Diving Championship. Up next is the girls' 100-yard backstroke as you see them jump into the water. We'll go over who's swimming. Kelsey Prince from Northview in two. Nicole Prentice from Lassiter in three. Megan Yang from Parkview four. Morgan Lyons from Alpharetta in five. Morgan Duncan from Brookwood in six. Haley McInerney from Peachtree Ridge in seven. North Cobbs, Julie Storch in eight. And Lauren Search, Searcy from Etowah in lane number nine. The last time we checked, the last time that we got any sort of results with scores on them, Brookwood was really starting to run away with it. Kennesaw Mountain, Peachtree Ridge, and Parkview were all trying to run them down. The big story here, Brookwood's Morgan Duncan finishing in 10th place in the prelims, not getting into that A final, not able to score those big points. Yeah, that's going to really hurt because now they don't have any swimmers up in that A final. And the best she can do is finish ninth. And she really needs to do that. She can't get down on herself because she didn't make it in the final. She's got to step up big right here and win the, get ninth place. 
Megan Yang up there in lane four. She's a park view swimmer. She'll be looking to upset that bid from Morgan Duncan as well. Right now it's Morgan Lyons that's running away. Her sister Carly Lyons was also an amazing backstroker. Morgan Lyons finishing and will finish in first or rather ninth place overall. And look at that, Brookwood and Parkview, after all of that talk, finishing in seventh and eighth, respectively. So not as much of a force as we were thinking they would be. Morgan Lyons winning it. Second place going to Julie Storch in lane eight, and third to Haley McInerney in lane number seven. A final time, some big points on the line. Hannah Martin from Etowah in lane two. Camden County's Elizabeth Willis is in three. Katie Grover from Milton is in four. Megan Young from Etowah is in five. Mill Creek's Rachel Dudley is in lane six. Northview's Christina Moran is in seven. This will be her last individual swim of her career. Kennesaw Mountain's Melissa Postol is in lane eight. And Anna Tate from Parkview is in lane nine. And it's her last individual swim of her swimming career. And what better way for that Parkview swimmer to finish her career than to score some huge points for Parkview. Yeah, and she really needs to. She, after after that disappointing swim there in the B final for uh, for Parkview, they really need her to step up here. And and hopefully, she's down all the way down in lane nine. She needs to step up and get up there and get a top three position, score those points. Kennesaw Mountain needs a huge swim from junior Melissa Post Stoll in order to get back into this mix. Without that 200 free relay, they are very crippled in the race for the state title. Right now, you see the girls stretching out, trying to get their bodies moving. They will jump into that water, place their feet on those yellow touch pads that you see, and have pretty much one of the more awkward starts in the swimming world. But the girls, we've noticed, don't spend as much time under the water. Yeah, they really, a lot of the girls will get a few kicks off the wall and try and get to maintain that speed off the wall, but they're gonna wanna get up out of the water and really start to get, get the swimming going because they're a little bit faster over the water than they are underneath the water. Only All-American consideration time came from Megan Young of Etowah in lane five. No freshman in this heat. Anybody's race, really, if you look at it, only two seconds separating first and eighth place, although the battle is really going to be in the middle of the pool between Young, Dudley, Moran, and Grover. Moran really would need a great swim if she were to get up there and win that state title. Wow. Megan Young really has some great underwaters, and you saw her take a bit, take a lead going off that second turn, but then uh, Rachel Dudley really came back on her there on that second lap. Dudley is now in first place, Young in second. Katie Grover of Milton is in third. Moran, uh, we mentioned earlier, has fallen to seventh place, although she is a second-half swimmer, as she proved in the prelims. Young and Dudley battling it out. Great breakout there by Rachel Dudley of Mill Creek. She looks she like she might run away, away with it. This. Yeah. And she, she's accelerating as she goes into the wall. Yeah, there she, she goes. Not, that was too easy for her. 55-39. She went from being wow. only a state qualifier to getting an All-American and a new state champion. You see the handshake. They both drove each other to some great times there. Third place goes to Katie Grover in lane number four from Milton. Second place goes to Megan Young from Etowah. And your winner, Rachel Dudley from Mill Creek. A great way to end her individual swimming career with a state title to her name. Up next, the boys under breaststroke. Stay tuned. You're watching the 2012 GHSA State Swimming and Diving Championships.
We're now looking at our consolation finalists for the boys' 100 breaststroke. Nathan Huffnagel from Walton is in two. Eric Wan from Milton is in three. Brandon Neese from Duluth is in four. Brody Snyder from Mill Creek in five. Mitchell Cross from Camden County in six. Dustin Wynn from Brookwood in seven. Joseph Portillo from Duluth in eight. And Jordan Lightstone from Wheeler is in lane nine. The 100 breaststroke, the state of Georgia, not always the strongest breaststroke state, but definitely a fun race to watch. Yeah, it really is. And like you said, it, we're, Georgia has traditionally not been much of a breaststroke state, but occasionally you'll see one guy come out and really throw down a big time. And these guys are going to be throwing down times, and the, a source of their speed is really going to be on those underwater pullouts. And the, you'll see the strongest and the fastest ones really accelerate off the turns. A faster turnover, not always a benefit to you in this race. Sometimes grabbing more water is the best. Lane three, Eric Wan, who's been having a great finals for Milton. He's in the lead coming into the last 25. Second place is Brody Snyder. Snyder and Wan Snyder's battling it out. Back on him. Snyder trying to reach. It's really going to come down to whose timing is on. It's going to be Snyder. Oh, it wow. is. It is Snyder winning the consolations. Huff Nagel with a great swim out there for Walton. Getting third place, and Eric Wan not. Eric Wan was uh, a little bit long into the finish, and that's that could cost you in a, t in a close race like Yep, that. but you can't be upset for Eric Wan. He broke a minute, which he's never done before, finally getting under that barrier. And Milton, once again, doing a great job with their swimmers. We move to the A final, and Taylor Aguirre from Collins Hill starts us off in lane two. Nick Cassidy from Centennial in three. Nathan Jones. From Parkview is in four. Nick LaMontagne is in five from Brookwood. He's our top seed. Ricky Lehner is from Bro Parkview in lane six. Boy, they'd be upset if I said Brookwood right there, wouldn't they? <laughs> Davis Beauchamp from Walton in seven. Jeffrey Carter from Parkview in eight. Chris Loft from Hillgrove in nine. Let's look at this. Two, three Parkview swimmers. One Brookwood swimmer. Is it safe to say that if Parkview really challenge, if really puts in the effort here and goes, let's say, all three swimmers within the top six, that the meet might be over? I, I would say with one with one event left, one this is the last individual event for the last relay. And Brookwood's really got to do something to get, put themselves in range. And if if Parkview puts this away, and I, I would especially look for Ricky Leonard. He got disqualified on that two, in the A final at 200 IM earlier in the meet. He's really going to want to come out and make an impact right here on this last race. A lot of emotion in this race. Nick LaMontagne, a very nice young gentleman, had the opportunity to speak with him yesterday. Very confident that he can go in and win this race today. He's going to need to if Brookwood is going to stay in this uh, meet as a potential state champion. We will see if they can do that. The points shake out right now. Lassiter and Brookwood both trailing Parkview. Lassiter with nobody in this race. you got to imagine that with the deficit that they have, they're probably out of contention for that state title. But stranger things have happened. Here we go. You're going to see a relative mushroom cloud of explosions as these guys hit the water. And it's going to be a big, loud gang coming from the Parkview group. They always come out in great forces hey, to cheer. Tank looked a little bit shallow off that start. He started his pull up before he, while he was still not all the way underwater. LaMontagne definitely uh, a little nervous. He's the uh, a junior. There's no freshman in this race. This, once again, is one of those races that favors the strong. Look Ricky, Ricky Leonard. Leonard. He's really taken off here on the first part of this race. He looks angry. And look at him go. Ricky Leonard. Great. you got to imagine that he's furious yeah, about he, not being. After that 200 IM, it's, there's not, after, after, you, after disqualification like that, you really want to come out and just almost show that so you're So I suppose person. it's time we pull the wool off of your eyes and explain to you Ricky Leonard is actually the state record holder in this event, and he's looking to break his own record. It's a 55-88. He's really flying. He's not going to break it tonight, but he's going to win the state title. 56-40, an incredible swim. Absolutely wonderful swim, an All-American from him. And look him. at that, Parkview 1, 2, and 3. They, did, they just closed the door. That's Parkview game over just right ended and made themselves the state champions. And what uh, again that, and again, Parkview steps up. They, uh, uh, and I am, sh I am so amazed by the coaching at Parkview. Every year they step up. Let me go over the results. Third place, Parkview. 
That is Nathan Jones. Second place, Parkview. That is Jeffrey Carter. An amazing swim out yeah, of Carter. Incredible. And in first place, Ricky Leonard, the defending rec uh, state record holder, defending champion. He wins it for Parkview. We'll be back with the girls' 100 breaststroke in just a moment. You're watching the 2012 GHSA State Swimming and Diving Championship. Next event is the girls 100 yard breaststroke in lane two. Alpharetta's Emily O'Brien, Mary McDevitt in lane three from Camden County, Morgan Stevenson in four from Kennesaw Mountain, Lauren O'Malley from Lassiter in five, Carrington Bevier from Peachtree Ridge in six, Cynthia Liu in seven from Roswell, Olivia Jacoby in lane eight from Harrison, and Katie Neese from Duluth in lane number nine. <clears throat> the girls breaststroke different than the boys breaststroke in many, many ways. Yeah, it really is. They're, they're not uh, going to stay underwater. Like the other races, they're not going to stay underwater quite as long. They're going to want to get up and uh, get swimming. But you're going to see them be a little bit smoother, not quite as fast on their breast jerk. Yeah, the girls uh, seemingly get more power out of each stroke than the boys do. You won't see them quite as frantic. But that's actually because the boys have more muscle mass than the girls. They're able to catch a little bit more water, seemingly. Uh, right now, your lead is in lane number six, and that's Carrington Bevier of Peachtree Ridge with the early lead. She is being contested by lane number four, Morgan Stevenson from Kennesaw Mountain. She's looking really smooth to the finish right here. Oh, she had took a couple short strokes, but she still managed to finish that. And that is how it will finish. Third place actually going to lane number seven, Cynthia Liu from Roswell. Second place going to lane four, Morgan Stevenson from Kennesaw Mountain and Carrington Bevier from Peachtree Ridge winning it and getting ninth place points. We go to the A final now, and we see that the, the spread here is a whole lot smaller than it was in the boys. There's uh, anybody's race, so. Elizabeth Garreau from Brookwood in two. Jane Watson from Walton is in three. Jordan Drake from Lassiter in four. Allison Carr, your top seed in five. Two one hundredths of a second behind her in lane number six is Julianne Kirk. She's from Parkview. Lane seven is Jacqueline Rohall from Alpharetta. Rebecca Lombard from Woodstock is in eight. And Roxanne Scher is in lane nine. Centennials swimmer in nine. A lot of talent all the way across the board. Very level playing field. Is it 
that the swimming has got better or is that the playing field this year is a little bit easier to maybe compete? I think it's a little bit of both, but I, I would have to say um, it, it might have gotten a little bit slower, but the field's more even. In pre previous years, you saw swimmers like Lane Brody, who holds a state record. You saw her just running away with it. She'd have a great time down there at 102. And you might not see that sort of time here in this A final, but you're going to see a lot better racing. It's going to be a lot closer. Yeah, it used to be that there was one swimmer that would finish in 10 seconds later, the rest of the field yeah, would come exactly. in. Now we really can't tell you who's going to win it because it is so close. We will see what happens here. A lot of points. Hopefully be, uh, Brookwood is looking to score a lot of points and potentially solidify their victory uh, in the girls' side of things. Last we checked, though, still anybody's game on the girls' side. And so we will see if Elizabeth Garreau can really kind of try and lock it down. Lassiter's Jordan Drake there in lane four. Lassiter is in second place right now, and they will be trying to score as many points as possible. Yeah, it's going to be really tough, though, for any one team in this event to really separate themselves a lot because... You know, every, every, every swimmer in this event is from a different school. Yep, and right now an early lead is going to lane number five. That's Allison Carr, Julianne Kirk from Parkview in lane six. She's in on it. Parkview, really a good supporting team that cheers extremely loud. Their coaches care a lot about them. And lane five still trying to pull away. Allison Carr of North Gwinnett trying to hold off Car Kirk of Parkview in six. They're going to go into the here wall completely Kirk. even. Watch this, watch this underwater right here. A longer time spin underwater by Carr. Jordan Drake trying to she sneak is. into the mix. She may be able to get back up in there, although her tempo Julianne is slowed Kirk's down. Julianne really powering through the finish right here. Kirk. Carr, who's it going to be? And it is Kirk. Good, good, good finish. Three tenths of a second from first to second. And overall, only three and a half seconds, four seconds separating our entire field. And you see the high five, both those girls driving each other to a very, very, very good swim, both breaking that 105 barrier. And your state champion in lane number six, that is Julianne Kirk. Third place went to Jordan Drake in lane number four from Lassiter and in lane five getting second place from North Gwinnett. That is Allison Carr. Don't go anywhere. The 400 freestyle relays and the crowning of the 2012 state champion will be up right after this. You're watching the 2012 GHSA Swimming and Diving State Championships. The 2012 GHSA Swimming and Diving Championships are brought to you by Verizon, America's largest, most reliable, high-speed wireless network. It's your social network, all mixed together. With Galaxy Nexus by Samsung, now you can organize your contacts into circles, like you do in real life. So you can choose what people see and what they don't. And with the speed of Verizon 4G LTE, you can chat as a group in a Google Plus Hangout without missing a beat. Introducing the first phone built for Android 4.0, only at Verizon. Thanks for meeting me here. No problem. You know, Farm Bureau Insurance has local agents making this kind of thing real easy. Well, your auto insurance has saved me a lot on old Becky here. That's great. And since our headquarters are local, we'll be here for old Becky for a long time. Harold, your dog swallowed the remote again. Who's that? Older Becky. Oh. Ugh. Real service, real people. That's Farm Bureau Insurance. We are back for the boys 400 yard freestyle relay, the last event of the 2012 Swimming and Diving State Championships. You're looking at the spread and the Kennesaw Mountain Boys in lane two, Duluth in three, Marietta in four, F Walton in five, Collins Hill in six, Harrison in seven, Grayson in eight, Peachtree Ridge in lane number nine. We will see uh, a very close race. The 400 free relay leaves a little bit more up in the finals than does the 200 free relay or the 200 medley relay. Yeah, it really does. You're going to see a lot of these teams, a lot of the teams vying for the state championship are going to be in that A final. Uh, and you're going to see 
no matter what team, B final, A final, they're going to put their best swimmers on this last relay because they really want to finish the finish the meet hard and not on, a, on not on a slow note. So while the first two relays might not be quite as fast, they're going to put everybody here on this last. Relay. Everybody putting their best foot forward, trying to end the championship on a good note. The boys are taking the panties off. They're growing up and they're making it fast. And away we go. And right now, an early lead is in lane number six. That's Lassiter. And that's Zach Bunner. You can expect him to be out early. A very talented swimmer in Bunner. Excuse me, that's uh, lane number, I'm looking at the wrong heat. That's actually Collins Hill. Uh, but the same comment goes for Marco Koralik, a very talented swimmer for Koralik. He leads into John Roquette from Collins Hill. Grayson still in second place. Ryan Murray now in the water for them, and it, Murray's going to struggle to hang on to that uh, second place spot. Yeah, John Roquette really is he's starting to separate himself a little bit, but watch out for Ryan Murray down here in lane eight. He's holding on strong, and the thing about this race, you don't, it's the same for the 200 as it was in the 200 freestyle relay. You don't want to be caught behind and have to catch up because it's so hard to catch up in these sprint races. Here we go, the second half of the second leg in the water. All right, looks like they're going to have to have a great finish here coming into this exchange because just like the other relays, this, this race is a, a lot about these relay exchanges. And if you get fast exchanges, you can really you can add a body length to your lead over, your, over the people next to you. And that is all coaching right there if you have good relay exchanges. You see Collins Hill still trying to hold on to the lead. Now challenging their lead is lane number five and lane number four. That's Walton in five, Marietta in four. Still up there after an amazing swim from Ryan Murray is Grayson. Very impressed by his improvement from prelims to finals. David Liska in the water for Grayson now. Collins Hill trying to establish a little bit more of a lead as they go into their anchor, which is Will Callahan. Calendar. Watch out for Walton. Walton and Marietta down here in three and four, or four and five, pardon me. Michael Dugan and Davis Beauchamp are going to be anchoring for Marietta and Walton, respectively. A great takeoff there for Marietta oh, and Michael yeah, Dugan. Marietta for Michael Look at Dugan that. There. He's already back in there. Beauchamp for Walton can get back into this race. He's one of the faster swimmers in the B final for his team. He's trying to track somebody down. He's already tracked down Collins Hills, Will Callender. Don't forget they've got a whole another 50 to swim. Who's it going to be? Davis Beauchamp really, that, that, it's extraordinary what he's doing right now. He got trapped in between two people ahead of him. He's really making a move right here to try looks and get like him Looks like though place. he's trying to fight a little uphill battle. He looks like he's tightening up. Yeah, he hey, took that first 50 out really hard. A little too fast potentially. And now Marietta's Michael Dugan is going to run away with it and finish in ninth place, first in this heat. Second place going to Collins Hill, third going to Walton. A great swim out of all three. All three improving their times from the prelims. Kudos to Walt or to uh, Marietta, who improved their time by four and a half seconds. A great swim from them. We go to the A final now. Here we go. And this is the last race for the boys. If you're a senior, this is your last race. Brookwood in lane two, Mill Creek in three, Parkview in four, Northview in five, Lassiter in six. Milton in seven, North Gwinnett in eight, Alpharetta in nine. The question is, can Parkview hold? The, it's almost a done deal. You got to imagine Northview could potentially run away with this. If anybody's going to go after them, it's going to be Parkview or Lassiter. All Parkview has to do is stay up ahead of everybody, but except for Northview, and they win the state title. Yeah, and. A nightmare would be for them is if they get disqualified. So you know Which, their coaches are telling them, right. conserve, swim hard when you get in the water, but be conservative on your exchanges. If, if you get disqualified, you, you, you lose out on the state and championship. And Parkview suffered a difficult di disqualification in the 100 breaststroke, and it very much angered them, as you would expect. Their coach uh, went to protest the call. Um, so now we're watching. We have two stories. We've got the state title, which if Parkview can stay not disqualified and not get dead last, which you imagine they will, they're the state champions, uh, the overall state team champions. Northview Titans, All-American consideration cut in the prelims. 
They were just off the All-American automatic cut. That's going to be their first goal. Their second goal is going to be to go after that state record. I think I think they're all over the automatic cut. I think their sights are firmly set on breaking that state record that Wesleyan set last year. And I think I think they've got a really great shot at it, anchored by Matthias Koski. He's already a two-time state champion. Alex Heldman, that out-of-state transfer leading off for Northview. Knox Auerbach, their new freshman, is going second. Matthias Koski anchoring. If he's got any sort of lead going into his leg, it's obviously over. He's the state record holder in the 100 free. He split a 44-26 in the prelims. Into the water they go, leading the way for Northview is Alex Heldman. Devin Hughes is in there for Parkview. Look at Sam Lewis down there for Very Milton. talented swim. Milton, Sam Lewis, he'll get out there ahead of everyone else. Eric Wan and Johnny Dodaro anchoring for them. Everett Hyatt might be their little weak spot, but don't count them out. They've done some amazing things behind some amazing coaches this entire week. All right. Yeah, Sam Lewis is looking really good. You saw him already won a state championship once this meet and get second in another event. He's getting them out of some good, clean water. And, and as a sprinter, that is ideal. You want to be out there with that smooth water and ahead of the wake that's built up by these big freestyle events because you can see from their kick, yep. there's a wave going down. It's like a tsunami going down the Knox right now. Arabach, the freshman with an amazing relay start going into his leg, the second leg of that race. Milton is still in the lead. A great swim coming out of Everett Hyatt right now. Lots of dirty water in the middle of the pool. Look for Drew Cuddick there in lane six. He's come making a move up there on, on Everett Hyatt. Northview flipped at a 109.6. That's a full second faster than they were in the prelims. They're going to have to be even faster if they want to go after that state record. Still Cuddick. trying to hang on as the freshman from Northview Knox Auerbach. We get into the two of the stronger swimmers in Matt Grodhouse and Matthias Koski on the last two legs. You gotta think if anyone can make a challenge Northview, it's gotta be it's gotta be Lasseter. Lasseter's gonna need a, a big lead going into that anchor they've leg. Got, they've got Jimmy Yoder there on the back half. If they can if they can have a body length on Northview, I could see this coming down to be a good race for I Koski definitely agree with you. Jimmy Yoder is very, very fast. We'll see if he can hold off Koski. Matt Grodhouse having the swim of his life right now. He flips, takes over the lead from Lasseter. 157.03 is where he just flipped. That is a second and a half ahead of where they were in the prelims. That's exactly where they need to be if they're going to go break the state record. Upsets Matthias Koski. you got to know what's going through his head right now. Matthias Koski is hungry, and that kid loves breaking state records. Parkview and Lasseter he's going right on Grodhouse's trail. He's going for that third state record. One meet. No, one's ever, no one's ever done that before. There goes Grodhouse into the water. Grodhouse breaks out. Oh, my goodness, what a kick. See ya. 2 22 16 is where Grodhouse touched. Koski is in the water. Well, set 1.7 seconds faster than they were in the prelims. Koski has the ability to turn it on. He's got all clean water ahead of him. Jimmy Yoder being very smart, sitting on the lane line, catching some of that wake. Pretty soon, though, he's going to be riding that dirty wake from Koski. Koski flipped it at a 243.10. That is... That is 2.1 seconds faster He's than the state record pace. Or excuse me, right on state record pace, here the state go. record. Come on, get into that finish. He's Three, got to have a perfect oh, finish six, here. 53. Here comes Koski tightening, tightening up, up a little, little bit. bit. Oh. 306.53, will he get it? Yes, he does. Oh, state record. Northview breaks the state record. 206.26. Matthias Koski seals the deal as uh, swimmer of the year, if you ask me. Not that anyone wants my flat opinion. There on the 44 flat there on the back half of that relay. That is a joke. That Ladies and gentlemen, seniors in high school don't go 44 flats. Let me just clear this up for you. <laughs> that doesn't happen. In fact, the fastest relay split prior to this was a 44.9. That was prior, or excuse me, 44.29. And that was prior to Koski in the prelims going a 44.26. He just went a 44.00. Third place is the this Parkview. They just won the state title. Congratulations to them. Don't want to overshadow that one bit. Wow, what a great swim from Parkview. Second place is Lassiter in lane six. And your new state record holder in lane number five is Northview. Look at Lassiter, a 307.93, getting just, uh, just barely above that All-American automatic cut. They will most yeah. likely be on that All-American uh, list. We will be right back for the conclusion of the girls' state championship with the 400 free relay. You're watching the 2012 GHSA State Swimming Championships.
consideration All-American standard, the Lassiter Trojan. Now looking at the finalists in the B final for the girls 400 freestyle relay. In lane number two, Hillgrove, lane three, Savannah Arts Academy, who's really shown up at this meet. Very good performance from Savannah Arts Academy. Walton in four, Northview in five, Collins Hill in six, Centennial in seven, Parkview in eight, Milton in lane number nine. The girls, same deal as the boys. Get out fast, get that clean water. Yeah, you really don't want to, like I said for the boys, you don't want to get caught up in that wash that's going to happen right here. It's it's not going to be quite as big uh, for the girls as it was for the guys because they don't create quite as much weight as the guys do, but it's still the same deal. You, you want to have that clean water as a sprinter. All right, into the water they go. And uh, lane number five, Northview, that's Kelsey Prince, a freshman. Northview, both of their four and a free relays Knox Arbach was the only freshman on the state record setting relay, three seniors, and Northview has the same deal going here. Kelsey Prince, the only freshman, and then three seniors in Vieira, Riddle, and Moran. We'll see them in a moment. Lane six, that's Jennifer Rutledge for Collins Hill. Expected her to be out fast and early. Maybe that strategy of putting her first will pay off. Maybe not. We'll see down the road. Yeah, you really, you re it's really interesting to watch relays because the coaches can have a variety of strategies. Like you said, they can put their fastest people up front and hope hope their, their slower swimmers or their not as fast swimmers can bring it home for them. Or you can see them put their faster swimmers at the end and really try and try and play catch up. It really just depends on the coach. A huge lead in lane six, an amazing swim right there from Jennifer Rutledge in a time of 52-37. Second was Northview, third was Parkview all the way down at the bottom in lane number eight. Collins Hill will try and hang on. Northview will only get faster as they go through their re their relay swimmers, as will Centennial, although Sarah Redman was quite potentially their best foot forward, although they're anchoring with freshman Karen Suija, who we've seen a few times before and expect her to have a great high school career. Yeah, and it, it's it's looking like this strategy for uh, Collins Hill is really paying off, although they're, they're starting to lose a little bit of ground, but... The strategy of getting out front is really helping them get an advantage over everybody else behind them. Clean water, clean breathing. Collins Hill now being pursued by Northview. Like I said, Parkview's down there at the bottom of your screen. They're trying to, to catch up and get into that first place spot by the wall. This Collins is really Hill. critical for Parkview right here to score some a big points. A slow transition from Northview, and they'll be really paying for that as Holly Riddle, their senior captain, tries to catch up. Riddle, not a year-round swimmer, so a little bit of pressure on her to perform as she has been put on this 400 freestyle relay. It's evened up now. Getting into the mix is Centennial, and that's Roxanne Scher that's showing up. If she can give Karen, Su Karen Suija any sort of uh, lead, you got to expect that Suija is going to try and challenge Christina Moran from Northview to win this race. Although Collins Hill is putting Brooke Phillips up there on the block for that anchor leg, so no doubt that she can compete as well. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to see some really fast swimming right here on the back half of this race because it looks like a lot of these teams, like you said, put, put their fastest people right up here on the end to really really race for the, for the win. They you're seeing Holly Riddle of Northview die a little bit. Remember, right she's not a year-round swimmer. Christina Moran follows her into the water in lane five. Lane six is Collins Hill, Brooke Phillips. She's not as fast as Moran, but she has the heart for it, so watch her very carefully. Moran the first to the opposite wall. Now in second place is Parkview. Anna Tate is in the water. Tate, one of the fastest swimmers on the Parkview team. She'll try and track down Moran. Moran is extending her lead over Collins Hill and over Centennial, trying to fight off Tate oh, from no, Parkview. She, she's tightening up through that turn, though. 
Moran very slow off of that turn. Something went wrong, seemingly. She is a 50 freestyler and a 100 backstroker. 100 freestyle, not She's necessarily her event. She's going to have to show heart here on the last race of her high school career. Here she comes, big kick behind her, fighting off Anna Tate. Tate, very big kick. She's trying to track her down. Marine stretch, Moran, excuse me, stretching out that stroke and holding on. 338.92, and that was a hula hoop of exchanges all the way around and around and around we went yeah. until finally we settled on third place being Centennial, second place being Parkview, and Northview getting first place, which is actually ninth place in the grand scheme of things. We go to the A final where we will decide our state champion. Lane two is Alpharetta, lane three is Etowah, lane four is Kennesaw Mountain, lane five is Lassiter. Lane six is Brookwood, lane seven is Harrison, lane eight is Peachtree Ridge, lane nine is Mill Creek. If you're Brookwood coach, you don't have enough of a lead to just do nothing. What do you tell your swimmers when you're walking into this race? It's sort of the same message that I'm sure Parkview's coach was giving their boys team in the last day final when we watched the, corner, or the guys' corner free relay. It's that you want to have conservative starts. The last thing you want to do is get disqualified. But you got to get in there and race. If you're, if you're just going to expect that you can just jump in and anything can happen and win a state title, you're, you're sorely mistaken. So they've got to they've got to make sure they've got conservative starts. They're not getting DQ'd, but they're getting in there and, and trying to actually win this race. And, and in order to win not only the state championship in this event, but also win the state championship as a team. This is this is it. And and if you're a senior. What, what, what's the emotion that's going through this you right is, now? This is the race that you dream, and you, you dream about and you live for it. As you're getting up, all your teammates are finished swimming. They're all cheering for you. You've got all your fans here. This, are, this Georgia Tech Aquatic Center is huge, and there's thousands of people here. And the noise that, have, that, that you hear and you feel and the emotion you feel when you step up on the block is unreal. It's almost surreal. And uh, Lassiter had a huge lead in the prelims, although Brookwood didn't necessarily put their fastest foot forward, and they've made uh, a few little changes here and there in their order. Uh, they do not, they had Anna uh, Johns in prelims. They do not have her in the finals. Kelsey, their relay is Kelsey Gouge, Evan Parker, Becky Bass, or Bass, excuse me if it's either or, and Rachel Muller anchoring Bass and Parker, or excuse me, Yes, Bass and Parker were bases replacing Anna Johns from that prelim swim. So a little bit of a move made. Don't count them out. But uh, we will see what happens here. Very fast swimmers up front for Brookwood. Lassiter has consistent fast swimmers all the way through, so we'll see how they swim. Jordan Drake is going second. She's one of their fastest. And Sarah Williford is going fourth. She's one of their fastest. What uh, What is the strategy that would maybe drive you to put your your second fastest swimmer second? Well, if if you're putting your fastest swimmer first and you're putting your second fastest swimmer second, um, you might be getting out to clean water. Or if you're just putting your second fastest swimmer second and then having your fastest go last, it could be a strategy to try and help uh, Get a little bit of, get that clean water. I can't emphasize enough how much clean water is important for a sprinter. And the strategy behind going second is um, try and motivate that first swimmer to go a little bit faster maybe and 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 then have have a little bit of lead going into your last two swimmers. Who are Kelsey Gow's coming down this stretch. Parkview is not in this heat. They were in the B final actually. And uh, Lassiter is in this heat. They do have a chance, albeit small, to overtake Brookwood. They Brookwood's would, not holding back at all. Right. They would need a disqualification on Brookwood pretty much if they were going to go and win this title. Brookwood way out in front. Uh, the girls might not have listened to that advice for safe starts. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes... It, either they're doing it on purpose or they're letting their emotions get a be, get the best of them. Hopefully they can maintain uh, maintain that speed and that emotion in the water, but stay disciplined enough not to jump when the when they're, the person in front of them is coming into the wall. Lassiter closing the gap behind the swim of Jordan Drake. We said she would do it, and she is doing it. Michaela Jenko from Lassiter will go in next. Brookwood's Becky Bass, or Bass is going to be right after that for Brookwood. 
Rookwood and Lassiter are neck and neck for first and second place. All of the state title is on the line. You've got one more exchange. Brookwood just needs to be safe through that, and if they get second place, they've won themselves a state title. Lassiter really bringing it home. The state record in this event is relatively untouchable. It was set back in 2009 by Brookwood. It's a 326.54. They would have to drop eight seconds from prelims just to entertain that thought. Uh, probably not going to happen for either of those teams. But they can get that All-American automatic qualifying time, which is a one, excuse me, which is a 330.30. So watch to see if they can get under there. Here goes Lassiter, anchor Rachel leg Bowles, in there. Really gonna have to, uh, Brookwood, Rachel. very safe start. Smart, yeah. smart, smart. Very smart turn. But well, watch Rachel Muller here. She's going to really try and she might have had a conservative start, but she doesn't want to lose this race. She's not going to have a conservative swim. You're exactly right. A huge swim coming right now from who else? Rebecca Postol from Kennesaw Mountain. She is going to be out fast. She's already tracked down Sarah Williford. The question is, did she track her down too early? Did she let her emotions get the best of her? I don't know. It, it's it's in this 100 freestyle. You got to get up fast. You got to get going fast. And it looks like she's not she's not backing down at all. She attacked that third 25. Post stole Williford Muller all in the middle of the pool. We're coming down to the last set. Post stole really turning right it on. Gotta Muller put your head trying down. to make something happen. Look Who's it Muller. gonna be? Post stole. Put your Postol, head down. the freshman just made it happen Great for Kennesaw slams. Mountain. An amazing swim. Brookwood overtakes Lassiter, and Post stole went fast enough to just be off of that All-American Automatic cut. Only three-tenths of a second. An amazing swim from her. Third place goes to Lassiter. Second place goes to Brookwood. With that, they seal the deal. They are the state team champions. Congratulations, Brookwood. But the first place in the 400 free relay, our champion for the moment, is Kennesaw Mountain. We'll be right back to wrap it all up for you. You are watching the 2012 Georgia State Swimming and Diving Championships. The 2012 GHSA Swimming and Diving Championships are brought to you by Verizon, America's largest, most reliable, high-speed wireless network. It's your social network, all mixed together. With Galaxy Nexus by Samsung, now you can organize your contacts into circles, like you do in real life. So you can choose what people see and what they don't. And with the speed of Verizon 4G LTE, you can chat as a group in a Google Plus Hangout without missing a beat. Introducing the first phone built for Android 4.0, only at Verizon. Thanks for meeting me here. No problem. You know, Farm Bureau Insurance has local agents making this kind of thing real easy. Well, your auto insurance has saved me a lot on old Becky here. That's great. And since our headquarters are local, we'll be here for old Becky for a long time. Harold, your dog swallowed the remote again. Who's that? Older Becky. Oh. Ugh. Real service, real people. That's Farm Bureau Insurance. And we are back for the wrap-up of the 2012 GHSA Swimming and Diving State Championship. An awesome meet all around. Our top five on the boys' side in the final scores. Alpharetta in fifth place. Northview in fourth place. Brookwood in third place. Lassiter in second. And a dominating performance from Parkview, who just year in and year out demonstrates how good they are on the girls side we are still waiting on those scores but we do know that Brookwood is our champion fifth place now we have at Kennesaw Mountain fourth place was Etowah third place was Parkview second place was Lassiter and like I said Brookwood with a dominating performance of their own taking the state title we thank you so much for joining us for the GHSA state swimming and diving championships Congratulations to all of our swimmers, especially the girls team from Brookwood and the boys team from Parkview who take the, home the 2012 hardware. For the two of us, for Richmond Green, Kevin Cargill, I am so happy you joined us. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. We will see you next year.
in the ladies' side of the ledger. Top 10, finishing in 10 with 106 points. Harrison, in ninth place with 109. North Gwinnett, finishing in 8th place with 117 points. Walton, in 7th place with 152 and one half points. Bill Creek, in 6th place with 167 and one half points. Finishing in fifth with 170 points. Kennesaw Mountain. And finishing in fourth place with 172. Etowah. And now for the hardware, the top three. Finishing in third place with a score of 176. The Park View Panther. Yeah.